תארו לעצמכם שיכולתם להיות זבוב על הקיר בחדר העסקאות של דונלד טראמפ, אורן באפט, טוני רובינס או גרן קרדון. עכשיו זה אפשרי. ברוכים הבאים לעוד פרק בפודקאסט פאנל מומחי הנדל"ן מבית נדל"ן ולעניין. בפודקאסט זה אנחנו מראיינים בכל פרק משקיעי נדל"ן מנוסים שמספרים לנו איך הם התחילו להשקיע בנדל"ן. באילו אזורים הם עובדים ומה מאפייני האזור שלהם. דרכי ההתנהלות הייחודיים להם בהשקעות הנדל"ן שביצעו, וכמובן, מספרים לנו על טיפים מיוחדים מתוך הניסיון היומיומי שלהם, כך שלנו נוכל ללמוד ולהתפתח. הפודקאסט משודר בחסות המנוי הלימודי שלנו, המוגש לכם באתר פורום נדל"ן ארה״ב, הרי הוא מנוי real smart. אתם מוזמנים לבדוק את המנוי כבר היום באתר פורום נדל"ן usa.com. מה המנוי כולל אתם שואלים? בבקשה. אנציקלופדיית נדל"ן מקיפה, בעלת מאות ערכים שיעזרו לכם ללמוד את תחום הנדל"ן בארצות הברית לעומק. לדוגמה, איך מתחילים להשקיע, איך מנתחים אזור, אסטרטגיות השקעה שונות, מהי חברת טייטל ועוד. שווי המנוי הזה, 500 דולר לשנה. כמו כן תוכלו להוריד מעל 500 קבצי נדל"ן הכוללים אקסלים לחישובים שונים. חוזים ומסמכי נדל"ן, מצגות, ניתוחים ועוד. שווי הקבצים, 750 דולר לשנה. המנוי מאפשר לכם גם גישה חופשית למחשבוני נדל"ן אונליין שיעזרו לכם לחשב את עלויות הפליפ הבא שלכם. בררר, יודעים מה זה? ביי, ריהאב, רנט, ריפיינס, ריפיט, תוכלו לחשב זאת. חישובים לנכסים מניבים, חישובי הולסיילר, משכנתה, שיפוצים ועוד ועוד בשווי של 1250 דולר בשנה. כמו כן, תקבלו גישה מלאה לפורום זירת העסקאות האקסקלוסיבי שלנו. הכולל עסקאות מ-50 מדינות שונות בארצות הברית. הפורום סורק מעל אלף מקורות מידע מרחבי האינטרנט כדי לאתר לכם עסקאות לפי פרמטרים שהגדרנו מראש, כך שלא תפספסו שום הזדמנות. לא משנה באיזה שוק אתם עובדים ברחבי ארצות הברית. מתנה בשווי 1,450 דולר בשנה. בונוס נוסף שתקבלו הינו צפייה חינם בכל הרצאות הפאנל של מומחי הנדל"ן. ועשרות הרצאות נוספות בשווי של 199 דולר לכל חבילת הרצאות. מנוי ריסמארט נותן לכם גם 50 אחוז הנחה על כל ההטבות באתר, כגון הנחות בעמלות ליווי אצל יזמים ומייצים בכל רחבי ארצות הברית. עלות הקופון תעלה לכם 250 דולר בלבד כדי לקבל הנחה של 1,000 דולר אצל היזם. תוכלו לפתוח חשבון בנק בארצות הברית ללא צורך בטיסה בחצי מעלות הקופון הרגילה. לקבל מימון למשקיעים זרים לרכישה הבאה שלכם או לביצוע ריפיינלס. לפתוח חברה מרחוק בהנחה משמעותית. לקבל הנחות בחומרי בניין והום דיפו לפליפ הבא שלכם. לקבל הנחות משמעותיות אצל רואי חשבון ישראלים ואמריקאים מומלצים. הנחות אצל עורכי דין ועוד ועוד. רוצים להתייעץ? רוצים ליווי אישי? אין בעיה. במסגרת המנוי תקבלו 50% הנחה גם על כל שעות הייעוץ והליווי האישי שלנו. ואם כל זה לא מספיק, בתור מנועי התוכנית האקסקלוסיבית שלנו, תקבלו כניסה חופשית לכל כנסי הנדל"ן שלנו במהלך השנה, והצטרפות בלעדית לתוכנית שיווק השותפים האקסקלוסיבית שלנו, כך שגם אתם תוכלו להרוויח משיווק המוצרים של הפורום. סך הכל שווי ההטבות 6,550 דולר בשנה. מה העלות המנוי הלימודי המדהים שלנו, אתם שואלים? העלות היא... 299 דולר לחודש בלבד, שאין ספק שזה שווה כל דולר, סך הכל בשנה 3,588 דולר. מספיק שתימנעו מטעות אחת בזכות הידע ובזכות המוצרים שאנחנו מציעים, תוכלו לחסוך סכום זה. אבל בזמן ההשקה אנחנו מביאים לכם את כל זה בעשירית מהמחיר המלא. 29 דולר לחודש בלבד. אבל זה מוגבל ל-20 המצטרפים הראשונים, אז אל תפספסו, יירשמו עכשיו. נקודה שחשוב לדעת, המנוי החינמי שלנו באתר, מנוי ביל, מאפשר לכם גישה לעשרות הטבות בלעדיות לחברי מועדון הנדל"ן, והנחה משמעותית בגישה לעשרות אלפי מאמרים הפתוחים לכולם והמוגשים לכם ב-12 שפות, כולל כמובן עברית, אנגלית, רוסית, ערבית, סינית ועוד ועוד. כך שלא משנה איזו שפה אתם מדברים, תוכלו ללמוד איך להשקיע בארצות הברית. עכשיו, אתם לא רוצים לשבור את הראש בשיפוצים? רוצים לקבל שכירות כבר מהיום הראשון? אין בעיה. חברנו לחברות הגדולות בארצות הברית, כדי לתת לכם מגוון נכסי טרנקי בכל רחבי ארצות הברית. 
מה זה נכס טרנקי אתם שואלים? נכס טרנקי זה נכס משופץ. אם דייר משלם באזור טוב עם חברת ניהול, המנוהל על ידי חברה אמריקאית גדולה ומבוססת. אתם מוזמנים להיכנס לאתר שלנו כדי לקרוא על כל אזורי ההשקעה המומלצים ולבחור מתוך עשרות נכסים שמשלמים שכירות מהיום הראשון. אז תעזבו עכשיו הכל ובואו לבקר עוד היום באתר שלנו, forumnadlanusa.com. למה אתם מחכים? אוי, כמעט שכחנו. רוצים ללמוד נדלן בבתי הספר המובילים במדינה וגם לקבל את מנוי ריל סמארט חינם בשווי 6,550 דולר? הצטרפו דרך האתר שלנו לתוכנית הלימוד של בתי ספר לנדלן הטובים והמובילים בישראל, כגון פרויקט X של רוברט שמין, רפי מזרחי, עוז קורן, אג'נדה פיננסית ועוד, ותקבלו אוטומטית מנוי ריל סמארט חינם. כך שתוכלו ליהנות מכל הכלים שאפשרו לכם להצליח בנדלן ובגדול. אך אל תשכחו, אתם חייבים להירשם דרך האתר שלנו. אז אל תשאירו שום מקום לספק, ידע זה כוח. ועכשיו, ברגע שכולם חיכו לו, עוד ראיון מרתק ולימודי עם מומחי נדלן מתחיל ממש עכשיו. Uh, of real estate in the US and we have a very 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 special guest I'm sure that a lot of you know him some by name some met you know like he's he been to Israel he come to Israel every three months to the conventions of project X uh, I saw so many pictures of so many friends of mine from the forum hugging you and you know like uh, I'm sure you're supporting all of them. And it's kind of like an amazing that we have this opportunity to sp- speak to Robert Chemin. Hi, Robert. Hello, Makore. Kol Metsuyan. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for letting me do it in English. My Hebrew is uh, kaha kaha. <laughs> yeah, no, sure, no problem. Uh, the, the thing with Israel, uh, I, I'm sure you noticed. Uh, you know, I, I remember when I was a child, uh, a kid started learning English on fourth grade. Now, I, now it's first grade. Probably one time they're going to change their official language, either to Russian or to, <laughs> to English. There's only one thing I, I don't love about Israel. I've been trying to learn Hebrew fluently since I've been 16, 15, and everyone in Israel speaks better English than me. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard stories of people that want to learn, and they come to Israel, and then everyone speaks to them in English because they want to show how good yeah. their English, instead of speaking <laughs> in Hebrew so you can learn English. The language right so and, and all the Israeli friends about they go eh, I don't speak such good English but I'm anticipating the implication of the grammatical syntactical <laughs> like, the encyclopedia of the rocket science and you know like uh, yeah. yeah but, but not that good no, not that perfect yeah um, I, I've been here in uh, New York for 10 years so um, some people tell me that you know I, I'm still have the accent uh, I think it will never go away and Uh, but some people tell me that I start to sound, sound like American, which is kind of surprised me. But uh, I work a lot with, with Americans, so I'm sure that eventually my English got a bit better. Yeah. I've got but some talking news for you and all my Israeli friends. All Americans are not from America. <laughs> Except <laughs> the Indians. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, an immigrant country. Like, uh, we have, uh, like, just in New York, I think, like, 140 nationalities. Yes. You go on the subway, you see people from... everywhere like every person is from a different place where are your grandparents from Zafta where is your uh... um, one from uh, Slovakia yes. like my, my, uh, my grandfather from uh, my father's side and the other one is uh, actually uh, Yemen so oh. it's kind of like a mix from the two the two Ooh. ends of the globes <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, I, I did this genetic <laughs> test and it's a met it's amazing how precise it is that you see like 49 percent 51 percent and wow. they know everything about you you know like they, they know everything. I, was, I did the attest to it's great I was so disappointed I'm 99.9 percent Russian Jewish oh really okay <laughs> so well, Chinese, that's good it's kind, it's kind of uh, interesting my, my colleague at work the gra- a graphic designer she she is uh, african-american. And then she did the test and she was found to be 1% Jewish. <laughs> and, she was, and, and she is the most Christian person I know, you know, like she, uh, 
So, you know, you, you can never know uh, what mixes happen somewhere. You know, like uh, my grandmother from my mother's side, you know, like instead of Yemen, they, they said that they are Aden, which, uh, you know, like... Uh, it was. It, yeah, it's a certain part and, and uh, it's a lot of mix of uh, British people over there because it was a colony. So, so people from Aden are lighter skin like all of her sisters and brothers are have blue eyes and stuff so who knows what happened there i don't know <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm a real problem i'm a jewish from tennessee shalom y'all <laughs> shalom y'all <laughs> that, that's a mix of um, the, the american tennessee accent and, uh, <laughs> and the israeli hebrew that's nice all right so uh we, we have a, a long uh, uh, as much as we can conversation in front of us so what we usually do in um, in the conversation in the form, you know, it's very informal. It's not CNN. It's not uh, Fox. I know you you've been on uh, a lot of those. I'm sure that there are a lot of people. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Not going to scream at me. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 yeah if, if they don't have someone to interview, just give him the my number. I can find <laughs> a, an hour here and there, no problem. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, so basically, you know, like a, a lot of people know you by name, know the things you do uh, um, and stuff, but, uh, but they might not know the struggling that you had as a child, how you started, you, you were not born into that. Um, so you, I, I read and I saw uh, interviews that you actually had uh, some speaking, like uh, speaking issues when you were a child, you had bracelets in the leg, like you, you really went through struggle so did it make you what you are as a person now how did it influence you how was it well thank you first of all i'm in real estate so i'm struggling every day <laughs> <laughs> i mean things are good but you know still, bit... still after like i heard you have like a thousand properties and stuff so one of the questions later on is like all right what, what still motivates you you know like if if you have struggling you can sit on the beach all day basically and uh, but yeah. you, still, you still have a lot of goals that we, we're going to discuss. Yeah. And I've tried that, uh, um, and I, I think we're made to do something. But, you know, if you have a business, you're, I don't say struggle, but you're dealing with people. Where's the contractor? Where's the closing? What yeah. happened money? Where's the people? It's called people. So it never ends, this new challenge. But when I was growing up, uh, there's really no reason I should be here being interviewed by a, a successful Israeli uh, <laughs> Because um, I was born in Tennessee, my parents so from the Bronx, so grandparents from Russia, nice Jewish family. And uh, uh, I was, not to get into too much detail, but I was kind of born dead. I had lung problems, I didn't think I was going to live. I did live. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess everyone can uh, uh, well eventually. I was very sick. I had uh, uh, braces on my legs. I, I couldn't really walk very well. I couldn't play sports. I couldn't go out too much. I didn't speak properly. I had a very uh, thick speech impediment. Until I was about 11 or 12, I, I spoke like that. My wife would talk, talk, talk to me. I'd talk about that. And people, you know, and, you know, people are nice, but some people aren't so nice. And I remember growing up, like a lot of people, you know, everyone's got challenges, a, a lot of negativity. You know, what's wrong with him? I wasn't even going to school. I really didn't have any friends. Um, but I always was pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I was around a lot of negativity. You know, everybody hears, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, limitations. But I, I had a lot of them. And I always tell people there's one reason why I'm really, I think I'm alive, is my grandmother. Everyone has a special aunt, Zapta, grandmother. Person, yeah. Yeah, nanny. And, and she was always one who was always positive. Even when I wasn't doing anything, I, you, you don't worry, Robert. You got a nice personality. You can do whatever you want. Everyone else, like, what's wrong with him? Then the strange part was a woman spent a year with me in uh, the Tennessee school system uh, and taught me how to speak. She was a speech pathologist, and she really fixed me, a miracle. Wow. And it changed my life. All of a sudden, now I'm speaking better. I'm not, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and everyone says, oh, now it's going to be great. My parents were excited, and he'll do well in school. But I guess it wasn't like a physical issue. Maybe, maybe it was all, uh, more like... Uh, um, something like intimidating from like the you know you it, it, because eventually she did fix it yeah it's funny a lot of stutterers it's stress but i had a real stutter. my mouth didn't work and I, the, 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 it was something was wrong and 
I didn't uh, learn how to enunciate. I wasn't using my mouth right. And she, it was really, she literally spent hours a day with me. You know, it was, it was intense. It was hard, you know. And it's really amazing that now speaking is your uh, major, well, like you, you speak everywhere. You, you, I read you spoke to more than a million and a half people, like in convention yeah. and TV and stuff. So, so I think, I think so my parents just showed that everything is possible. I think my parents regretted it later. Now I won't shut up. You know, I keep talking. <laughs> they say, why won't you get back to the way you used to be? Uh, <laughs> speak and, uh, but um, what's interesting, but my parents and everybody thought, oh, he's walking a little bit now. I couldn't really do sports. You know, people make fun of you. And I couldn't speak. And I'm speaking. And my parents and teachers were like, oh, it's going to be great in school. And I made zeros. <laughs> Just whatever I did, almost every class, zero, zero. Because when I was 18, after I flunked out of uh, high school, I never graduated, um, and they kept throwing me here and there and trying things, I uh, was diagnosed with dyslexia. So a lot of things that people, you know, can do easily, I, I just can't do very well. I'm getting better and working on it. Um, but I was in school and teachers were yelling at me, what's wrong with him? They, I got thrown out. I never got a diploma. It was uh, challenging. But again, I was kind of always pretty happy, always having fun, but going nowhere. <laughs> Is that still influence you these days? Let's say contracts, things like that, or you, you have, I, I know that you have, uh, later on, we're going to see about the, your book, OP, like uh, other people power. Yeah. So basically you're using a lot of other people to help you, of course, attorneys, things like that. You know, I believe everybody, everyone who's listening, watching you, you have strengths. There's things you're good at, there are things you like, and there's things you don't like, whether it's uh, business or life, correct? And I can tell you right now, I don't type, I don't read maps. I tell people one of the reasons I live in Miami Beach is if you go to the hit the water, you've gone too far. <laughs> people go, you know, Waze, uh, Google, it's like, it's a map. My brain doesn't have spatial ability. I'm getting better. Um, math, all the things you're good at, I can't do. <laughs> uh, computers, math, uh, science, uh, algebra, all the things you probably made, uh, because I know your background. Uh, but what's interesting is people think with your dyslexia, you can't read. I have click-lexia, so I can actually read very well and have a good gift for languages. So I speak eight or nine languages. Wow. Unfortunately, not very good with Hebrew. Hmm. When they threw me out of class, which was pretty much every day, it was my fault, whatever, I read every book in the library. Wow. Every so, encyclopedia. So it might give you strengths uh, in other parts that... You know, the, the, the mystery of the brain. You, you might be so talented in other parts and, and have some issues in, in things that other people can help you. I, I know that, uh, that there was a, a, a while that my wife was at home, not working with the kids and stuff. And, uh, you know, she, 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 is, uh, she liked to clean everything, everything perfect. But, but, but then, for example, she went to work and she still wanted to clean. I told her, listen, there are people that, you know, that no one can replace you at your job. She's a teacher. She's a Hebrew right. teacher. In a Solomon Schechter in a, in Israel, yeah. in, a, in Long Island. So, <laughs> so, so basically, I told her, listen, there are things that you cannot be replaced, but there are things there are things that you can easily bring someone to clean or to cook to help you. You are not working. You're you're a busy woman. So so I definitely get it. You know, there are some things like accounting. No one needs to know every bit of accounting. That's why we have accountants for. <laughs> But it's funny, in, in business and real estate, everybody wants to do everything themselves, even me. I'm going to find the deal, analyze the deal, fund the deal, fix the deal, paint the deal, sell the deal, manage the deal, rent the deal. And I'm not, there's, in business, you can't do everything. You know, Bill Gates is not uh, packing boxes and exactly. uh, making the motherboard. Chapter five of your book, I know. Yeah, huh? exactly. Chapter five of, of, of your book that we're going to discuss later on uh -oh. uh, uh, speaks about, you, you, you give an example of Bill Gates, for example, that... No, no one build a company by themselves. Everyone have other people that help them. Even if you are the leader, if you have the vision, Elon Musk or everyone else, like they, they have the vision, but they cannot build everything by themselves. Yeah. So uh, I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. And, and everyone else does too. You know, when you're doing something that just stresses you out, <laughs> you're probably, it's not your gift. And then, you know, people, some people are great musicians. I'm from Nashville. And he plays and sings like amazing, you know, Everyone has strengths and weaknesses, but growing up, it was crazy. And then, you know, I don't usually say this, and I feel great being here. You know, growing up Jewish in Tennessee, um, it's kind of like, you know, being an Israeli in Israel. It's a bad neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, every day people were telling me I'm going to burn in hell. 
<laughs> you know, except Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I'm like, well, I'm Jewish. They're so like, you're going to burn in hell. <laughs> and I'm like, it was a really strange, uh, you know, that we had a couple of hundred Jewish families in Nashville, and uh, it was crazy. I mean, we were different. Uh, you, you, know, you know, it's, it's kind of it's interesting. There are two graduates of Project X in Israel. Maybe you know them by the name, Roman and Omer. Oh, sure, yeah. You know them? So they, they are now working, uh, they, they are working in Milwaukee and stuff. Yes. So I, I want to give it as an example of using other people or teams because I, I interviewed you them to the podcast, the podcast that we're now on. Okay. They, yeah, they've been on uh, one of the episodes, and it was really interesting for me to see. You know, they they say that one of them is kind of like uh, it's in Hebrew Sarah uh, the uh, uh, like the the minister of foreign affairs. So yeah. The one that like to talk to everyone and, 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 talk everyone to everybody. and everyone likes him and stuff. And, and Roman is more like the analytical guy. So they, you know, he's the Excel and the numbers and everything. And Omar doesn't like to do that, you know. So they are kind of like, um, you know, they, they are, uh, their connection is perfect. So, so it's kind of amazing to see the connection that came out of Project X that we, we're going to explain later uh, soon, like what it is. But uh, I think it's a, a very nice example of uh, other people, like connection with other people that everyone fulfilled yeah. their, their, the missing parts of the other. Yeah, and I always tell people, you know, what's one plus one? And everyone goes, well, it's two. And I'm like, no, it's 11 uh, with the right people. You yeah. know, we can get more done. You know, like you, you have a high tech background. I can barely read email. <laughs> I could go spend 10 years studying high tech or how to do a startup or, a, um, you know, programming. But I'll never know what you know, right? Or I can just call yeah, you. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, that's why. Back you know, like, 10 years ago, hey, I you need my help, just call me. <laughs> and now, um, I wanted to ask you, eventually you got into an MBA degree with all of, uh, with all of the issues that we had. You work for, uh, for companies, uh, but you were broke. You, you felt broke and you wanted to get away from that routine. So I, I remember at, at your book, you, 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 you said a very nice story that you've been in Manhattan and you had two kids at home and a, a story that changed your life. You got into a hotel and you, you met, uh, uh, you, you, you took a tea over there and oh. you, you wanted to feel like, like the rich people and, and you basically that, you in the book, fake it until you make it. Yeah. So if you remember the story, if you can tell the audience about the story. You know, it's funny. I gave that as an example. It actually wasn't me. It was a woman uh, that I knew, that I knew. Oh, okay. Because uh, I'm like, wait a minute. I've only got one kid. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right. it's okay. I'm cool with seven. But anyway, um, I was giving an example of. I was. I've been up and down when I was younger. I was pretty broke, and I always tell people, you know, I was around a lot of broke, miserable people. You know, uh, a lot of them had the same last name as me. You know, my family, and. The woman gave an example. She was having a hard time too. So we all have stress. She wasn't doing well. And I think I told her, take an hour or two and live rich. Now that doesn't mean go spend money you don't have like the American. The Israelis are probably listening, fake it, you make it. Oh, it's so a fasanim, American, you know, stupid. Yeah, uh, the, the Americans, I, I, I saw it work. That they, they are buying a second house or third house. You can't afford it. Empty all year. You know, like an Israeli would think, what? An empty house? No rental? What's going on? <laughs> I, have, I have friends that have uh, uh, houses worth a million dollars, which is nothing in New York or Tel Aviv, but in Tennessee, it's a nice house. Yeah. And it's empty. They can't afford furniture, but they want to look good. Yeah. So I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying go to a, a, a nice hotel, sit in the beautiful lobby, go to the theater, go to the country club if you can get in, or a uh, charity event. I'm not saying blow money you don't have but be around wealthy people, treat yourself well, because when you're around that environment, you go, wow, you know, I can, you know, go and live a little better. And sometimes it does cost money, but sometimes it doesn't cost a lot of money, you know? And eventually we are the average of the people we spend time yeah. with. And I remember in your, in your book, you, you have three different groups for people, the one that's going to let you down, the, the, uh, I don't remember exactly the phrases that you used, but, uh, you know, like, uh, like the, the people that usually family, like you said, uh, I remember when in my real estate courses that I took years ago, they, they say, and luckily they told it to me, don't consult with your mother if she's not a real estate mogul, you know, because eventually, like my first investment, I bought in Batyam. It's like a city oh, Batyam. next to Tel Aviv. 
Well, the Russians are now. Как дела? Хорошо, спасибо. Hello, хорошо, спасибо. Иди сюда. Yeah. A lot of Russians over there. So I got there right before, right, right before we turned 2007. And, you know, no one invested there yet. There like, were like... You the, it's a, you know, what are you doing? The what? Did you get that? You're like, what are you doing? It's crazy. You should invest totally, there. Totally, totally. And, and we are, you know, like my, my mother, uh, like we are from uh, one of the best neighborhoods in Tel Aviv, uh, Ramat Aviv. So, you know, like uh, all of the people around, you know, like surrounding me, a lot of like rich people and stuff. What's your son doing in Bakhtiara? Please, it's uh, embarrassing. Like, uh, like, you know, like uh, what's going on? Uh, are you like, you, like for her, buying a house or apartment is for living you know so she said oh why but young like her dream she, my parents were not rich but my mom uh dream was to to live in ramat aviv like you know it's the same thing i guess like to to you know like to, to feel like so, so we we grew up in a small apartment i shared the room with my brother i remember a birthday of a friend of mine that he that his father was the ceo of sony israel wow He's, he's, he, he owned uh, uh, like a, a block next to me, but three stories penthouse that each, each floor is four apartments. So his birthday was on the top floor of the penthouse. And then I bring people to my house and, you know, like, uh, listen, yeah, everyone has struggles. Like you had struggles, you know, like living in a rich neighborhood without being rich. It, it's, it's also not easy. Totally. You know, like you, you share a half a room and you bring a, someone that is very rich, you know, like for, for a kid, it, it, it's, it's not easy. Um, so, so that's why when I told her I buy there, she, she, you know, for her, she wanted me to, you know, to be influenced and, and surely my degrees, my free degrees in IT and stuff, surely been influenced by my surroundings. That, that's for sure. You, you see your friends and you follow. A lot came from me, from my wanting Bill Gates and all of that, you know, my, my dreams of who I want to be. And I, I remember being 13, I, I have a huge booklet at home with articles that I collected about every different topic, about real estate, about technology, about health. When I was 13, I remember that there was an article. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I remember an article explaining how much it costs to raise a child till he's 18 in Israel, 1.3 million shekels. You know, no. like all of the expense. Yeah, like when, when I was 13, or, or the, the influence of the train between Tel Aviv to Rishon LeZion, when they're going to build it, like his people yeah. are going to move to... Yeah, with knowledge. <laughs> yeah so, 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 you know, like real estate and technology, are like, like when I was 16, I remember like uh, there was these old phones in the living room, no yeah. cell phones, you know, just one phone on the wall, uh, talking about buying uh, land in Binyamina when I was 16, you know. Uh, so th that was my dream like like like, like uh, i really connect to what you went through like how to to live big you know like uh, the idols back then were bill gates and all of that so telling my mother that i want to buy over there she was scared but luckily they teach me not uh, because they told me these people they love you but they're gonna take you down they're gonna bring you down from your fantasies and dream and eventually, to, to make a long story short, like I, I, I looked, I'm very analytical. That's my background. Yes. So I, I went for six months, seeing four apartments every day, having them in an Excel sheet, like uh, the, the, the size of the, of, the, of the, you know, like if it's north, south, you know, every side have... Uh, Overanalyzed. I spoke to every possible realtor there first to understand, to cross... The, the knowledge of which location is, uh, which area in Batyam I should invest. And then I concentrate on this location. So eventually I found, I found this apartment um, from a, a couple that they, um, uh, the wife was pregnant, nine months pregnant. They bought already their new apartment in Hulon. They were stressed. They put it on the market for 450,000 shekels. Just realize now, now these are two million shekels. Sure. That's, like, that's kind of like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, eventually, and it was a second uh, block from the, from the sea. So you could see the, 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 the ocean. Ocean view. Yeah, ocean view, <laughs> something like that between, you know. So eventually what, what I did, the, the way I, I sold it, I saw that in Israel, a lot of the, uh, like the, there is um, 
כונס נכסים, uh, like uh, auctions of, of, yeah. uh, of people that couldn't pay for, for uh, like foreclosures. So eventually, the, the funny thing was that this, in these foreclosures, these auctions, you have people in an attorney sitting at the table and the price jumps 5,000 shekels between each one yes. and the price of the apartment is higher than regular apartment. Right, they get so, excited. Yeah, they, so they, I, I already knew all of the, and that was my first, like, uh, it was the first deal from, uh, uh, I did a real estate course, so kind of like a third lesson in the course, I started doing that, so I did it through studying. Uh, it, it was one of the first courses in Israel, like, uh, there were no r- real estate courses in Israel, I, I'm talking about. Now uh, there's a lot. Years ago. <laughs> yeah, long ago. I, I kind of, like, give my age up, <laughs> you know, so, so uh, eventually, I went to a, a law firm. I told them, all right, this is the way I want to sell my, my deal. Usually they take 1%. They told me, all right, 3%. I told them, you know what? Okay. So I, I brought also, in, in Israel, inspection is not a common thing. People don't do inspection for okay. apartment. I found this old veteran uh, engineer from the Technion. I paid him 500 shekels. I'm yeah. talking about 12 years ago, 13 years ago. He came. He, he created a report about some holes in the walls and stuff. So I could keep, uh, I, I got the price down from 450 to 400. Nice. I, I put 40,000, 10% into the deal. So eventually I marketed, the, the market price already went up when I'm doing the process from 400 to, to about 600. Wow. Yeah, uh, j- just by, 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 by the time that went. I, because I, I placed tenants there for a few months. And then the, the market crashed in the US 2008. Right. No one knew what's going to be in Israel. So then I thought, I, I remember one of my teachers for real estate told me, there is a bonanza price for every deal. If you're making enough money, you, you can sell. Like, don't, don't be a pig. Don't be too greedy. You made 100% sell, you know, especially when you don't know what's go- going to happen. So eventually I came at night to Batyam. Uh, I placed notes on all of the... Uh, city sign, signs, I, I even got two fines of 80 shekels for that. I, I, I put signs under every real estate agency selling the apartment for 550 with water view. Yeah. And there's only uh, below market price, 600 was the market price, 550 to make interest. And only one viewing, only one showing. So I brought 40 people to see the apartment with the water view in one time and to create uh, an urgency. Like an auction. We do that yeah. too. And I brought all of those to the attorney. And eventually the price in the attorney, it went up and up and up and up and up and up. It's got to 650. And then suddenly one guy put 800, twice, no twice the volume. And after the closing, I asked him, listen, wh- why did you have the price that high? So apparently, you know, everyone has the story and all you need is one selling one one per, one buyer. person to sell, one buyer. buyer so he he got married he, he's an older guy he was like uh 70 or something 60s motivation what did he do that for so so he he married a very rich woman and his role in the marriage was to find apartments and and uh, back then you could separate the apartments and have let's say three units in an apartment yeah. in Badia. so that was his motivation he didn't ca- really care about the price so he paid eight hundred dollars. So I put 40,000 40, 40, in, and I got four hundred. After seven months, I made thousand percent, and this is how I started. Later on, I did it a few times more. So this is my, this is my story. I love it. With my real estate background. It's funny what your story. There's like a whole uh, real estate book in there. <laughs> <laughs> One, everybody has paralysis of analysis. Correct. You you measured what how many houses before you looked, right? Yeah. And number two, I interviewed one hundred investors before I made my first offer, and interviewed one hundred tenants personally before I made my first uh, offer on a house. Wow. We, we were analyzing, analyzing, right? Yep. Uh, number so, two. What, what was your first real estate? Uh, how did you get into real estate? So I know I have a big advantage over everybody. You know, everyone listening is in real estate. They're smart Israelis all over the world. Uh, you know, you got you got a great group. Um, I had no interest in real estate, zero. 
I was uh, going nowhere. I was back in Nashville. I uh, was supposedly selling insurance and I never sold any. <laughs> and I was working in restaurants and um, I, the insurance company only worked with wealthy people. They recommended me this guy, supposed to be very rich, you know, the buy all this insurance. And I went out there to meet him. Very simple man, good man. Uh, he looked broke. I was brought up uh, like many people, you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. We were, my immediate family was not rich. Some of my relatives were, but not us. Uh, number two, you got to be really smart to be rich. Go get a degree of tech and on, CEO, lawyer, doctor. Um, I did eventually go to law school, but that wasn't working at that time. And uh, anyway, I met this guy, very simple. He had 121 houses paid for. That was just his rental portfolio. He was buying and fixing and selling and paid for, making millions. Wow. And I look at this guy, simple, no background, no real education. He never graduated high school like me. And I said, if this guy can do it, maybe I can. So he showed me what to do. You know, he taught me. So but he was I the first mentor. I know you mentioned like the first mentor that. Yeah, um, Ray Binion. And, uh, but he told me what to do. And like most of it, I didn't listen. Like some of our students, they argue, they debate. I debated him, you know, and he told me to do one, two, three. I did a four, 12, and 20. And I would not make an offer. And. We tell people, if you don't make offers, you get no deals. So for a year and a few months, I was paying. I had a mentor. I, was, I still worked. You know, I, I was broke pretty much. I was working at a restaurant, working at insurance. And after a year and a half, I made no offers. So how did I get my first deal? His friend, he got so frustrated with me because I wouldn't listen to him. He gave me to a friend. And his friend said, you're going to make an offer. Not America, you know, you make an offer, you don't have to buy it. You can get out. So yeah. there's no risk. Yeah. But I was so scared, analysis. I'd look at hundreds of houses that were great deals, 30% back then, 40% below market. Those are hard to find now. And he said, make an offer. You can inspect, get out 30 send days. Offers, Dave. Send offers, send offers. Something yeah. going to catch. And every day I would just like you, I was analyzing. I said, I got to go home and do more research and look up things. It was stupid. And finally he locked me in the car and pulled a gun on me, basically. Really? He wow. got so tired of me. This other guy that uh, my mentor's friend, he locked the door. No, it's now or never. Yeah. Robert, so, yeah. And he, and he literally he had a gun. I mean, in, common in Tennessee, you know. Uh, <laughs> not so, people and, in Israel don't realize it. Yeah. But it, it's it's fear. What keeps people, you know, I don't think as many Israelis have fear, but Americans, you know, we're scared to make a move. We're scared to do this. Um, I don't think it's so much in Israel that fear is not that big of a deal. Some people, but. And finally, my fear of him hurting me, of being locked in the car, of getting shot, was greater than me making a risk-free offer. So I always tell people, you know, what's it going to take for you to get started? And the other problem was I had no money. Yeah. So the next question is, is, okay, I got this property under contract, but I got no cash. I have no credit. My parents taught me never borrow money. And, you know, in America, you know, everything's credit. Yeah. And I had no credit score, so no bank would loan to me. So I went to my mentor and said, I can't get money. And I think I was trying, I think subconsciously, I think we all do this. And I tell people, I, 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 I used to love to be right. <laughs> you know, ego. I don't care about being right anymore. I want to be happy. Let's make some money. Let's be healthy. Let's help each other. Let's cooperate. But back then, I, I was like, I can't do real estate. I have no money. I have no credit. And I went to my mentor to prove him wrong. And he made me write down 10 people that I knew that had credit. And I showed him a deal. And the third, fourth person said, hey, it's a good deal. I have credit. You find the deal. You're energetic. And he put the money up. We split 50-50. Nice. Yeah. That was my first deal, but it took me a year and a half. Yeah. So I, and you know that a lot, I, I, see, I talk to many people in the forum every day, you know, calling me, contacting me, uh, asking questions. And a lot of them, even though Israel is, as you said, you know, might have less fear by being in the army and being go-getters and uh, it's a startup nation and stuff. So, so I do see amazing f things happening to people. Yeah. You know, a lot of them uh, going through the, the project, project takes and stuff, yeah. you know, like, um, but a, a lot of them are very afraid of, you know, uh, what's going to happen if the numbers are wrong or if the location is wrong or, or if the person that I work with is wrong, you know, that there's so much fear. And I think jumping into the water, doing the first deal, even uh, there are stories in the forum that some of them, you know, people lost a bit or made only made $5,000 and not $50,000. That's, that's a, 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 how, how you call it, uh, 
I call it the cheapest seminar in the world. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I want to so, do. You know, uh, we don't want people to lose money. It happens. I mean, I'm very real. You know, people at these seminars, it's everybody makes money and every deal works out great. Run. <laughs> you know, we're not like that. But uh, I tell people, my, one of my worst deals, I, I made $500. Right? Yeah. You know, and I probably spent 100 hours on it. Yeah. You know, when I knew what I was doing, I made mistakes. I didn't follow the system. But you know what? You had 100 hours of learning, of education. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, somebody, yeah. one of our students lost $8,000. They didn't follow the system. They messed up. They didn't, you know, it happens. Yeah. And I said, listen, it's not good, but you're in real estate for 20 years. Yeah. 10 years from now, you won't even think about it. But right now, that's the cheapest seminar you went to because you'll never make that mistake yeah. again. Exactly. And pe people need to know not to jump the first deal like, like for a building of uh, 100 stories. You know, start with something. That God forbid you made some mistakes. Eight thousand dollars are not going to ruin someone's life as long as right. they're working. And you know, uh, Gilad, one of my Israeli partners at Project X, he has the best saying. He says there's only two things: people are scared of losing, being a fryer, making a mistake. Right? It's gonna happen. Show me a business. Show me a relationship where a problem doesn't happen. If you have one, send me your number. I'm coming to you now. I'm signing up. I'll, you know, it you doesn't know, exist. You know, they say that if you never fail, you probably didn't try enough and you didn't That's, do enough. What like, he's saying is there's only success, which we have a lot of that. And sometimes you have a, 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 what we think is a failure, which we're scared of. That's what frees us. But the failure is not failure. It's learning. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And, and no. through, through, uh, the, through the failures, eventually you know what to do next. And you make sure that next time it's not going to happen. Uh, many years ago, a friend of mine said, Robert, the property's worth uh, uh, 50000 in Nashville, you know, in Israel, in Israel will be you know, $5 million, whatever. And he said the repairs are eighteen, And I believed him. And I didn't check. And my mentor said, always check, always check, verify. And, pri and I didn't. And it was disaster. And I don't think he was lying. I just think he made a mistake. But I thought he was an expert. And he's not. I'm responsible. You know, we teach people, it's your investment, you're responsible. Now, ever since then, I triple verify. So, yeah, it was a mistake. Always, always double and triple check. It was horrible. We, we, we the best our, uh, my investors were closing on a building. We got the first uh, inspection, and then they needed to do fixing. So, we are getting another inspector to do. Just today, just before the, the call, I, 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 I got... I send the information off the list of fixes that needs to be done for the building yeah. for another in, uh, inspector to go over that. You know, there's so many uh, small things with the title, with everything to verify. Uh, th there's always something going to happen, but I guess through experience, uh, you know, to double check everything and, and leave as much as less possible things to, uh, to just uh, yeah. happen accidentally. You know, a lot of people get into real estate, they go, I'm going to buy some real estate and something good's going to happen. <laughs> That's no system, you know, and sometimes it works. It's like I go to the casino and I see someone pulling the slot machine. I say, what's your strategy? <laughs> you know, there's none. Oh, now I'm in real estate. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to succeed. Everyone succeeds in real estate, you know, like a, a, and the passive income thing, you know, the, the, the passive income. Uh, getting into passive income, there's nothing passive in the path of getting into the passive income. You need to work. You need to. There's no such thing as passive investment. <laughs> you have to watch it. You have to check on the progress, the paper. Exactly. You got to look. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. I, you know, you have to do something. <laughs> if you don't, it's become not passive at all. Because yeah, then, but, then, you know, you, eventually we're. We we're dealing with people and we're dealing with elements, you know, like the, the wind, the, the weather, things like that. Say, and this is so basic, I'm even a little embarrassed saying it, but from your story, the one thing I like, which a lot of people don't understand, is you worked. You went, look, you're handing out flyers, you're talking to 40 people. Most people won't do that. And you have to work. It's you know, kind of really funny, like, every, like a lot of the time, you know, on the way to Batiam, you, you go through the Tel Aviv uh, boardwalk. And yeah. I had a friend that he lived right on the boardwalk. So sometime on the way back, uh, midnight, 1 a.m., after seeing four or five uh, properties a day, getting them into the Excel, I went over to his, his apartment. We we're looking over the ocean. Then he told me, Leo, are you crazy? What are you doing? Like, you, you've been walking all day till 7, 8 p.m., and then you go and you see these apartments and stuff. 
and and what's going on with you? And you know, I, I knew that I, I I was looking for something very specific, you know, like with the ocean view, with the location and everything. And I knew that if I'm not eventually going to close the deal, I was afraid because it was my first deal. That's why I was so analyzing, over analyzing a lot of stuff. First deal, you're afraid. You, you want to make sure everything is perfect. You know, now looking back, everyone, every deal on this shit I would buy. You know, it was hundred thousand. Everything there is in, now in the millions. You know, um, but. Now he's telling me, Lior, like l- looking back with the forum and all of the other deals that I did since then, L- Lior, like y- your time, your invested time, the, the, the time that you put in there, totally worth it. You know, I made a f- thousand percent in a, in a few months. Amazing. And I tell people, you know, most people work at a job like you, they, you know, or they, everybody, they go to university for three to five years to get a degree. Then they work at a company you know, in Israel, it's high tech, 70 hours a week. You know, most Americans, 30 to 60, correct? Lawyer, doctor. And, you know, real estate's the same. People expect they're just going to go do a deal. Like I tell people, you just don't go do surgery. You don't just go to court. You don't just start a high-tech company. You worked, correct? Exactly. exactly. Like every, everyone walked their way up. Elon Musk didn't, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, By the way, I, I, I'm actually, we're doing uh, some business with him now. And he's a, he works like crazy. Like I thought I was, you yeah. know, busy and active. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you, you can you can see that he's he's not like sleeping on the beach. One of the questions that I wrote, like, all right, you're, you're you you wake up, you're a millionaire. Like, what's your schedule? I, like, w- 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 with your friends that are also in the same level or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. some of them just on the beach all day. Or I think the mentality that people like Elon Musk, like you, like uh, like other people, like you, you're doers. So maybe first it's, all right, let's do for my family, then let's do to my friends and extended family and then to other people to help. You know, listen, we, we talk about it's work, it's effort, you have to know what you're doing, you need a system. But the number one determiner of your success is motivation, correct? Yep. If you're not motivated, all we, we, no one can make you motivated, you know? Um, so, so what I, motivates you still after, you know, well, you have all of the money that question. you can spend. But for it it changes life. all the time. In the beginning, I just wanted to, you know, I never thought I'd make any money. I just thought, I just want to like take a vacation, like a, a week, you know? <laughs> I know in Israel, the army go for a year or two, uh, yeah. six months. I just wanted a vacation. Then it was like, okay, I want a house, you know? Not a nice house, just to, you know, get some money to take my own house and not pay rent. Then I was like, oh, I want a nice car, <laughs> you know? Then I did go. This things got better. Then I want a Mercedes. I want a, you know, I got a Jaguar. And I thought, oh, that'll make me happy. Correct? Yeah. You, you, um, you, mentioned, you mentioned in your book the, the wall of success. Yeah. Like uh, for people to, to visualize their dream. Like to have a, a wall with everything that they dream of. Like the yeah. boat and the car and everything. What, what was your wall back then and what is still for you now? Like what, what I like the question. I'll go to now. Just, I'll tell you a crazy story. Um, I'm a big believer in that is, you know, write it down. And it about what doesn't have to be things. It could be lifestyle. Correct? Yep. So my thing is I love to travel. Uh, I was in Africa last week. I'm in Medellin this week. I'll be in Israel, which I love. Uh, next week it's the best place in the world. Then I'll be back in Miami with my son on the beach a little bit. Then I'm coming back to South America. Then I don't know where I'm going. But so Everybody has a different no. thing. Could be so art, could be wine, family, whatever it is. So I'll I'll tell you this, this crazy story. Uh, many many years when I first learned about this, writing it down, uh, I was you know I had maybe a few properties. I was starting to make some money, you know, a little success. And I was in Nashville, born and raised Tennessee. There's no ocean there, and I wrote on a sheet of paper, I want to live by the beach. I want to be able to travel and do real estate, not just make a bunch of money. And let's say I was making X back then. I, don't know, I was making $8,000 a month. You know, it was a, I was doing, for me, in Tennessee well, I thought. And I wrote there, my mentor said, you know, really get a high goal. And I think I wrote like $40,000 a month, right? And I want to be free so I can take weeks off, days off, and not have to do everything myself. At that time, I was doing everything, managing, working, you know. And I made a big mistake. We're at dinner, and they're like, what were you doing with your mentor this week? Oh, I wrote my goals out. Can we see him? I'm like, no, I don't want to show him. I'm, you know, low-key. My dad's like, please. My dad and brother are falling off the chair laughing. They're like, live by the beach. There's no beach in Tennessee. You can't leave your properties or tenants. Your business will collapse. My dad's like, I'm a businessman. You don't go from 8000 to 40000 Maybe you go up 20 30%, correct? And I felt bad. I put it in my drawer. I'm, uh, and a few years later, 
I was moved and it opened the drawer and I opened it. I was living in Miami, living in Costa Rica, living in uh, whatever. And everything starts with an idea. I always tell me, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't. Now what motivates me? I've retired three times. I, I wanted to ask you what, what that means. I, I, I read that you mentioned what? like retiring three times. What, what does it mean? Like, what, like, I'll tell you exactly what it means. In a, a six, eight months before the crash, like 2006, seven, my mentor is a very simple man, never finished 11th grade. We went to lunch, and at that time, I trusted him. A lot of people don't trust people. They don't trust themselves. They don't trust us. They don't trust Project X. They don't trust, you know, what's wrong. I'm looking for the problem. And I tell people, you know, whatever you think, you're right. But at the beginning, I didn't trust him. After many years of it, if he said go to the roof and jump, I would jump. I had that much trust. We're sitting at lunch, and here's what he said. He said, Bobby. <laughs> my name is Robert, but everybody calls me Bobby. He says, Bobby, I'm not a smart man, but I've been watching the TV, and I see these waitresses getting $500,000 lines of credit buying five houses in Vegas. And he goes, it's unsustainable. There's nothing behind it. You can't run an economy off credit lines. He said, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm like, yes, you are, because you always tell me what to do, and you're always right. He said, sell your properties. Wow. That's and, amazing. And he called it within like nine months. And I didn't sell all of them. You know, he said, pick the ones in the other cities and risky markets. They've gone way up. I sold 70% of my portfolio. Wow. That's and amazing. it was insane. I had a lot of money. I was whatever, what was that, 10 years ago, 40-something years old. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And I said, I got an idea. I'm a single dad. I got a great girlfriend. And we're going to go travel and go to the best resorts and beaches for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> Sounds good. And it was great. We went to Greece. We went, you know, uh, Turkey, Israel, oh, South America. Yeah. You know, amazing. I, I, can, I can totally see a retirement there in, in, that, in that part of the story. Like, uh, it, you saw it was that amazing. That was very smart. That, that's why having a good mentor with you that, you know, like it got the feeling. I think it was more than like a gut feeling for him because he said, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, he, he didn't mention he, like all he, 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 he saw it. He, he, you know, when stuff's so crazy, it's, and by the way, when there's a crash, it's only in a few markets, it's not the whole country. You know, Nashville never really went down. Um, you know, Memphis didn't go down. But anyway, people think in Israel, they think the whole market's like crashing. There, there's 30 markets in New York, different. They move different. But anyway, here's the point to the return. What you're saying now, it's very important for the listeners to understand. Sometimes, you know, I get questioned all the time. Is it a good time to get into real estate now? The market being like 12 years or whatever. They need to understand that there are so many different markets. Every state, every market. And then every city, every city. Of course, that there is a major cycle for the economy and things like that. But, but, but let's say Amazon got into DC now. Even if it's going to go down, Amazon going to bring it up. So, so it's going to balance. Part of D.C., I, I do deals in Frederick, Hagerstown, Washington, D.C., Virginia, that where Amazon goes up. By the way, National, uh, Oracle just announced they're buying, uh, putting five, ten thousand jobs in this thing. This neighborhood went, shoo, but the two mile, two, uh, three kilometers, two miles away, nothing happened. Miami, the beach didn't go down. Midtown crashed, and it's two kilometers, three miles. Yeah. So every market has, it's like saying, I'd like to meet a girl. How are the girls in the world? <laughs> you, need a girl. you need a deal. We, in Project X, we do deals. We, we know the market. You have to understand the market uh, and focus on one deal. But back to retirement, to finish your question. Great question. I, I mean, I'm not complaining. After nine months of traveling with my son and my girlfriend, and you know, I was doing a little bit of work, but not much, I got bored. Everybody's different. It's, it's part of us, you know. Like, let, let's say I have uh, endless money. Eventually, I'm going to be on an island. I'm going to start doing something there. I'm going to sell bananas. It's, banana. it's Talmud. Yeah, it's like, uh, Kabbalah. Oh, it's the bread of shame. I mean, you know, uh, you got to do uh, – maybe somebody can sit on the beach for five years. You know, nice. I know people that can do that. I can't. I got to create. And then I went back to giving back to more charity. And I've never – I've never been more motivated. So we're doing uh, 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 gift packages of 5,000 homeless children here in Colombia. Oh. Uh, I'm Student Financial League in America and Project X in Israel, the community we're giving back, we're feeding homeless, we're helping. And I, get, I, I do more deals, I'm more excited to make money when it's not for me, when it's to help a charity or do something. So my motivations change. I mean, I still make money and live well, you know, yeah. and like anybody, but 
I'm more doing more deals, more busy, more business now because I'm more motivated than when I'm going to go buy another car or another boat, yeah. uh, which is fine for some people, but for me, it doesn't do anything. So, so th that's fascinating. So let's talk about a bit about your book. And, and by the end of the interview, we're going to explain that whoever joins Project X gets a copy of your book. So nice. um, how come that idiot is rich and I'm not? A very famous book, uh, a bestseller. Um, so first of all, I want to hear what brought you to write this book. Uh, when and where did it happen? What was the, the, the driving well, behind it? You know, so many people, that was like my 12th, 10th book, 8th book, I don't remember. And I'm writing two more right now, so I can't even remember that book. Oh, nice. Um, but, you know, everybody, again, a lot of people think that to be rich, you got to be super smart from a rich family. And that everybody's thought, they look at somebody and go in there, maybe their uncle who hit it big or their friend, wait a minute, that idiot did it, you know, who thought of the pet rock, who thought of Facebook, who thought of, uh, you know, whatever it is. Some of it's complicated, some is simple. And the, the reason the book was, uh, A, to get your attention, and B, when I say idiot, I don't mean someone who's like just stupid, but I mean simple. And what I've learned from the most successful people in the world, now, listen, if you're uh, working for um, – uh, you know, unit 8200 or, or you're teching on and you're doing high tech biotech, which a lot of us really do, it's complicated. But a lot of people who are very successful keep it very simple. And a lot of people who don't are successful complicate it. And most of the most successful people I know, even if they're in complicated business, make it very simple. You know, uh, Bill Gates, Apple, let's put a computer in everybody's house. You know, uh, Tesla, let's change the way people Train, you know, uh, move around. They'll make it, you know, I met the chairman of Goldman Sachs. He goes, we're the shook for stocks. We, you know, buy and sell stock. Like you buy and sell uh, potatoes at the shook, you know, like <laughs> even though you got to be smart and know what you're yeah. doing. So that was really the purpose of the simplicity and stuff. Yeah. And to show that anybody who wants to, who's willing to work can, if they stick with it, be successful. And, you know, there's real examples in there. And also that it's not just a book about money. I think there's spiritual laws of wealth. They're in there, you know. Uh, I know this uh, when uh, I didn't uh, act right and do good things, uh, which I've done in the past. I couldn't keep my money, you know. Uh, and I do know when you're living right, living well, uh, doing the right thing. Maybe you don't see it exactly, but over time things work out. Uh, so there's a lot of that in the book too. And uh, yeah, really, exactly. I know that uh, sp spirituality is very. It's uh, something that is very important for you. You mentioned it a few times in your book. Yeah. Uh, you see it as, as part of the things that are very important, like, you know, besides money and uh, goals and things like that. Mm -hmm. so, so how do you connect to spirituality? Well, if you ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. It's, uh, I love talking about this. We usually don't. You know, I'm Jewish and I uh, went to Hebrew school, got bar mitzvah, and I come from 5,000 years of rabbis. And like most nice Jewish people in America, at a certain age, I'm like, well, this is boring. I don't like it. <laughs> you know? Um, and I kind of left and went everywhere, studied Taoism, uh, uh, Reiki, I looked everywhere. And then I've come back to Judaism. I think it's all there, uh, you know, in the Torah, the Talmud, and the, the, the great heritage we have, if you look for it in the right places. So I, I really uh, study a lot, pray a lot, and uh, I'm still open. But, um, you know, I think we, you know, we have a very nice tradition. It's all there if you look for it um, in the right way. And a lot of people say, I don't like this religion or that religion. Like, it's not that you don't like the religion. You don't like the people. <laughs> right? You know? No, no, religion is fine. Well, people, people ruin it. Audience are very connected to that part of you. I know your grandmother. I think she was a Holocaust survivor, right? Uh, well, she lived the same, similar pogroms uh, from Russia. She had up her mother, grandmother, half the families wiped out. And, uh, you know, tradition, respect, the grandparents, the morals, the ethics. And uh, I uh, sat down with Chabad Rabbi and wrote a book recently called Pizza with a Rabbi, just, you know, complaining. But I think it's very important. And uh, uh, even my most successful business friends, a lot of them have a very deep religious or spiritual, whatever you want to call it. Correct? Yeah. Uh, when I used to try to make money just to make money, it just well, it didn't work very well. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell you, you know, I'm, I'm not a religious uh, person, we're not coming from a religion, <laughs> but uh, w when we left Israel, actually before coming to New York, I got an, a job, an IT job in Cozumel in Mexico. 
So I was there, just got married, oh, with cool. my wife, yeah, and, and we've been war- living there for six months, just kind of, kind of like our honeymoon after yeah. getting married, and, and actually having, uh, like, my wife got pregnant, so I got a job in the U.S. with the startup and the real estate, so, so this is the way we move. But the, the people that helped us the most was Chabad House in Cozumel, they connected us to Chabad House in Brooklyn, yeah. like coming to the U.S. with, uh, you know, like a, a pregnant wife. Uh, I got the job. I started to make money and stuff. But, but still, you know, they, they helped us entirely. And, and now uh, every Wednesday today, every Wednesday in Queens, we have a, a, a group, even though I'm not religious, yeah. in a Chabad House, there is a rabbi and there is like a halachot. Yeah. And, and I really appreciate it. Like a lot of it is about relationship, about how to treat other people, not, not to say bad people, to finger about people. So you, you don't need to be a religious person to appreciate all of that and to connect to all of that. And, and of course, you know, in New York, the, Israel is there are a lot of real estate guys. So 80% of the people that come there do some kind of real estate. Networking. So it's kind of like a... a, a, a after the after the biblical part it's more like a business meeting we eat the shawarma falafel and all of all of this fun um but the connection with uh, spiritualism like you said I, I totally appreciate it at you and and overall i think it's very important yeah and uh, it's a very and uh, i love our community we, we are collaboration giving back helping yeah that, that's what's satisfying and everybody's different you know but we really like that, and, and our, we have a very nice community, especially in Israel, that someone will email in the forum, hey, if somebody need a wheelchair, and they raise the money for the wheelchair, hey, I need some volunteers for the Holocaust, or they give them the food on the you know, holidays, and everybody goes to help. We help the, uh, the, war, the, the warriors, the soldiers. And that to me, you know, whether you make 10 grand or 50 grand is great, but when you really give back and help, and that's much more satisfying, I think. And everybody's different. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, this group, we are talking all the time, what can we do, what, how can we give back? Yeah. We've been fortunate, we came to the U.S., everyone yeah. is well off, uh, how can we give back? So, so uh, like a soup kitchen, you know, gi- giving boxes, hundreds of boxes to the poor, the Israeli, the, the Jewish people. And my, you know, in Judaism, you know, this is the top, you give one box, <laughs> You're, you know, it could be good. But you give 10 or 50 or 100. Right. You help one person, you change the entire world. Yeah, and uh, I'm a word big believers. And in our community and projects, we, we teach this and talk about it every meeting almost, impact. We're not just here to, you know, yeah, you got to make money and pay your bills, of course. You know, when it's ups and downs, it's work. You know, you got to know what you're doing. But, you know, we, we, want, we want to have an impact. You know, why do you want to do the real estate? Why do you want to make the money? Right? What's it all about? It's, it's more about ourselves. Like, let, let's say you reach the point that you are good enough financially. Now you want to work on your, you know, like the, the Maslow pyramid of, of needs. Yeah. Like, uh, you, you, have the, you, you have the food and stuff, but eventually you want to fulfill yourself. You want to help others. So it's more than just like the money, of course. Now, What's now, funny about the money, I'll never forget because, you know, we all want to impress our fathers. I don't care who you are, Bruce Springsteen, me. And I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I've been in real estate about two, three years. I'm a millionaire. He goes, how's that? I said, I've borrowed a million dollars. <laughs> my dad goes, you idiot. You owe a million dollars. You're not worth a million. The, the bank owned the property. You yeah. know, the property was worth more, but I thought, oh, I was so naive. I go, if I borrow a million dollars, I'm a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it wasn't. He's like, no, no, no. Go back. <laughs> Try harder. Now, now, now by the way, I, uh, if we're already talking about borrowing, there's a lot of question in the form. I, I know living in the U.S., in Israel, it's less common. Uh, people that learn through Project X and other methods, they know that uh, leverage is, is a very important way of extending your overall wealth. On the other hand, I wouldn't mention names, but in the U.S., there's kind of like an agenda of being a debt-free. You know, I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm talking hey, about. Brandy. <laughs> exactly. One of my mentors. He's a good friend of mine. I love Dave. I, I have dinner with him. I've known him since I, he was one of my real estate guys. I'm from Nashville. Oh, really? Wow. Dave. Nice. So, so how do you see, uh, the, uh, how do you balance between the two? Well, first of all, remember, even this, um, 
when you're on a TV show or books, it's entertainment, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm serious. So, yep. you, you know, and, and I want to say something else too before I answer the question specifically. Everybody comes up to me, I have a hundred thousand. Should I buy one house or should I put a down payment or where should I put the stock market? I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm very real. We got to be real. Number one, what's your goal, right? Everybody's different. If you line up a hundred of our Project X students or a hundred of the successful investors in the world, they're all going to tell you a different way they do it. I only buy two bedrooms. I only rent. I only rehab. I, I, I use all leverage. I only use cash. I, are, are, everyone has their own uh, method, method. And here's my thing. Do the deal. Learn all the ways. Pick the one that's best for you. Understand everything has risks and rewards. Correct? Yep. Now, I was, most people are taught. Uh, my parents said, if you can't pay for it in cash, don't buy it. <laughs> you know, good Jewish, Russian, yeah, exactly. Rom, depression. No loans. Uh, don't take any money from anyone. It's risky. Don't do it. it. My parents, if they saw the grandparents, if they saw the dead, they'd come out of the grave and kill me. <laughs> because that's how their mentality. Now, I was very lucky. When I got into real estate, I wasn't interested, so I was open. A lot of people come to a Project Deck speech or the whatever. Maybe they're listening. They're like, they're like thinking and analyzing. I don't like what he said. All we ask, you're open you know, to new ideas. Yep. Now, most people say you buy real estate with cash, and you go to the bank, put a down payment, and that's it. I was taught by my mentor, he never put any of his money in a deal. Now, we don't teach that in Project X. We teach all the ways to finance. Yeah. Cash, bank, what's best for you, advantages, disadvantages. Everything has disadvantages. I had no money. I couldn't get a bank loan, so I had to find money partners. And to this day, I buy, find a deal. I get my money partners. Some uh, want 6%, some want 10% interest, some want half the deal, some want 20% of the deal. Some want 80% of the deal, but who cares if it's a good deal and you know what you're doing, whether it's your money, by the way, when you borrow money, it's your money, right? If you're my investor and you put 50% or a hundred percent, it's my money. I'm responsible for it. I just got it from you. I'm more responsible. One thing worse than losing Wait, your money is losing somebody else's money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I know a lot of people, I feel it myself also when I do things with my investors, and a lot of other people say, when did they risk their money? It's one thing when they're investors' money, you know, like they, they double and, and they even more because they're risking some, so, someone that might save this money for their, their entire life. We have a whole course to, uh, you know, I love going to Israel because like, tell me about the disasters and the problems. You know, in America, it's like, I don't want to hear about it. I'm going to get in real estate and make a fortune. It's not true. Listen, we have a whole course recorded in projects about what if it goes bad? You know, you put in 20,000 shekels, uh, uh, Shlomo put in 100,000, and the deal's going bad. Very important. Very Real important. Whole course. Communicate. Talk to them. You know, you're in it for the long term. It's a problem. It's not good. But how to deal with it? What about those? They run. They hide. They're embarrassed. Uh-uh. You know? And I, I, we, it's the real world. So, again, to me, money is money, whether it's your money, the bank's money, the money. Now, me, I was taught uh, I don't put mo money in most of my deals. You know, Trump didn't, <laughs> you know, 99% of his deals. Yep. Some people always want to put some money in to show their investors. Yep. Some people want to borrow it. Some people, whatever. It all works. Get the deal done as long as it's a good deal. If it's a good deal and it's all your money, you'll make a nice return. If it's leverage, you'll make more. If it's a bad deal and it's your money, you lose some of your money. If it's a bad deal and you leverage, you get wiped out. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And, and I'm sure some people at the course, first of all, when you tell them, oh, there, there is an entire course about failure, they say, failure? We, we didn't thought that this is possible at all. <laughs> well, if it happens, you're, you know, a deal's going bad. The contractor's late. You can't pay your, it just happened to a friend of mine and we, you know, he's late, but he's going to pay. Everyone's going to be okay, but it's a problem. Yep. Right? And it's communication. It's all about relationships. That's what we teach. Long-term relationships. Correct? Definitely. We're going to be doing real estate for 20 years. Take care of you. What, even if the wife or husband, what's the normal complaint? She didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. I didn't know. Communicate. Relationship. Key. People think that real estate is the business of bricks. It's the business of people. It's all about who you know, how you communicate. And you know what? I love a, a high-tech guy saying that. Because people <laughs> think, oh, with all the internet now, you're, that's so nice to hear you, a high-tech guy, 
you know, you, you're a tech guy. I, I talk to computer most of the time, but I understand that real estate, it's definitely the business of people. Actually, I, you know, I, I'm sure like, like you, and uh, uh, you met amazing people through, uh, through, through your ventures, through, uh, uh, through your deals, through Project X and stuff. So I, actually, I wanted to ask you, like, what kind of, of people did you meet that most influenced you? Like, I'm sure you saw success stories from, from students, or you met, like, uh, interesting oh. people through your deals. Like, people go, why, why, your life with why, them? why do you do Project X? And I, and I tell people um, about inspiring. And I'm going to tell you somebody. We have a student named Tina. She can't speak her here. And I thought, you know, I've been to Tony Robbins. I'm a motivational speaker. I, I love that stuff. And some of our students, not just Tina, they inspire me more than any course, whatever. When yeah. you teach, you learn. I know you've taught. I mean, you're doing it now. And when you teach, you have to stay on top of the things. If not, they'll, you can't teach. Yeah. But number two, you think you know a lot, and then someone will say something or do something that completely changes the way you think. And we have a woman uh, named Tina. She's amazing. She doesn't speak her here. She's done maybe 20 deals. She teaches with us now and whatever. And forget about the real estate. She inspires me because we all have, everyone in this who's listening says, I, I, I've got a weakness. I've got a challenge. Uh, I do. Bruce Springsteen does. Tony Robbins does. I know these people, right? Everyone thinks, and all of a sudden you hear someone who can't speak or hear. We have some students that don't see. Again, a lot of the Israelis who don't speak English so well, there are some of that. And they do deals. I go home and do more deals. <laughs> I'm inspired. It's who you're around. So my students inspire me every day. Our mentors inspire me because most of them not only are real estate people, but they're also like mental healers and uh, psychiatrists and I, I tell you, you can learn from everybody. Um, my son inspires me. I think young people, they're so open. They're so cool. Tell, tell us a bit about your son. Like, does he follow your lead? What is his goals? Like, uh, well, well, first of all, I'm his dad, so he doesn't listen to me. I mean, you know, we get along great. We talk every day. He does listen to me. What is his name first? His name's Alexander, and uh, I'm very proud of him. Uh, two things. I think kids are the best mentors, coaches in the world. So two quick things about my son. When he was about uh, 10, I was growing my business. I mean, I was going well, buying, fixing, selling. I was doing everything, managing, fixing. I was very busy. I was making money. And one day my son said to me, he goes, Dad, you like your business better than me. I how, went, did, how, did you huh? how did you react to that? Well, when we hear something we don't like, I'm human, we deny it. You know, no, you're wrong. You're my son. I love you. That's why I work so hard to, you know, pay for things. Yeah. He's like, Dad, when you're with me on the Shabbat, you're, you're, on the, you're thinking about work. You're distracted. You're not talking to me. We're supposed to be playing some games that day. I said, no, you're wrong. And then I did the hardest thing for anyone to do. Take a breath, slow down, and listen from his perspective. Why do we work so hard? To take care of our family. We love our family, whatever your reason is. That's why I was working. And then we neglect our family. I did it. You know, I'm too stressed. I'm busy. I got to take this call. I got to the email. I got to work late. And it shocked me. And I said, son, you're right. And I stopped everything. I went and got more training. I got help. I got mentor. How to put systems, which, you know, and to free me a little bit. I still work. I'm still busy. That was a big thing. Then when I was, uh, he was 15. Uh, I was speaking uh, with Tony Robbins, 50,000 people. I'm on the newspaper, the TV, the books. I thought I was doing pretty good. My son says, Dad, you know, I love you. You're a great dad. Can I talk to you honestly? Yeah, he goes, you're not very cool. <laughs> you think you are, but you're not. So what does that do? Puts the ego down. I had ego. Yeah. Number three, he, but he started his own businesses uh, when he was 16 selling phones. He did get into real estate. He did go through Project X. He became a Project X trainer. I was very proud of him. He was like 19 teaching, came to Israel and taught. And now he not only does a little real estate in business, but he does, he took what he learned in real estate and he does yachts, uh, million dollar boats in Miami. And he's happy and he works three days a week generally. And he's got the best lifestyle. It's not just about money, it's about lifestyle. Yeah. So we talk every day, we're together every day, we live together, we travel together, and we learn from each other. If you're open. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I really related to, to what you said, to what he told you as a child. I, I have an eight-year-old daughter and a four-year-old boy. 
and they see what I do with the real estate and everything. And when I go to inspection, I do, uh, I do deals in different states, but also in Connecticut, which is a two hour away. Yeah. So I took them with me. And, and if you ask my son, my, 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 my daughter, she's into design. So she want to be a designer. Beautiful. And he's going to tell you, you want to be an engineer. You already know what kind of penthouse you're going to have. You're four years old. What kind of penthouse you're going to have. I, I wonder where, where, where he got all of, it, all of these ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what kind of uh, helicopter you're going to have? Like you see a nice car, he says, uh, Dad, when are you going to be an engineer? Man, this, he, he said, man, this. He asked me, Dad, how do you say man, this in English? Even though he live in the States, he knows <laughs> man, this better in Hebrew. Yeah. And uh, we speak Hebrew at home. So he already have the wall of, of dreams. I like but I mean, mind. to have that consciousness at that young, I mean, I, at 18, I was thinking about buying a, a Subway sandwich for $2. That was my goal, or $4. Yeah. That's amazing. I, well, I definitely I'm, work on the mentality of, of, you know, like I know for, through uh, your book, uh, um, like teaching them not to be afraid of money. Yeah, it's uh, just a thing. Money and stuff, it's not a bad thing. You know, a lot of people say, like the Polish mother, uh, money is a bad thing. Be afraid of, you know, uh, it's dirty. If you can't get over the emotion of money, you can't. By the way, what's your son's name? Uh, Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom and Ella. I Ella think and Tom. future money partner, Tom, uh, with the helicopter and the, the man. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. I, I'm, I'm totally, you know, when I take him to an inspection, I, I tell him, all right, knock on the wood here. See if it's strong. You know, like, uh, Tom, this is your part. And Ella, you, you need to, to draw the building to design it. I, I totally get him into doing. I explained to them, you know, I showed them. And I, I remember with my wife that she's like a more like, a, she's Israeli, but the more German side and stuff. And, and she wasn't into, she's more spiritual. She wasn't, not, now she's one of the managers of the forum. Like she not deals with, with the people and stuff. Uh, she's very communicative with, with, with the people. And stuff. But she went, I see the process that she went. And for example, Ori the, uh, from Project X, with his wife that they are doing a project uh, that is like a military background. I love him. Just talk to him. Oh my God, he's amazing. He's amazing. He's yeah. Fine for me too. So, so, so basically she saw, you know, I saw the process that my wife went through, through managing the forum. We've seen all of these couples that suddenly were doing things together, working together. And working together and building something that is 11 and not just two. But and which is, which, is, which is amazing. And I see the change because she used to think like, you know, don't talk about money. Money is dirty and stuff. And, and I told her, no, it's the opposite. You need to teach the kids that money, money is not the purpose. Like the, the purpose is the good life and stuff. But, you know, like to get there, you, you need to walk through a process. You need to educate yourself. You need to, to understand the, the engines that's going to bring you there and you have to, you need to have big dreams. Like I told you with, with my son and, and just to finish that, that, that idea, I spoke to one of my partners in Connecticut and he was every weekend was going, he have a, a daughter, two years old. And two. he told me two, yeah, two or three years old. And he that's told hard. me, uh, you know, definitely we do all of this for, for them. But I told him, I told him, listen, right now, when you are away all of the weekend, yeah, maybe in 20 years, you're going to appreciate the houses and the buildings. But right now, she needs you. Yeah. So, so I definitely over, you know, like Shabbat or something, I'm with my family. I give 100% to them, even though being crazy busy all week. Huh? Very important, like, like your son said, that I really connected to what he said. You know, he needs the dad, your dad. Yeah, of course. He, he enjoys That's all of it. They don't want things. They we just want your time, relationship. Exactly. But, but what I'm hearing, you know, you grew up in the basement of the nicest neighborhood in you know Israel, the little house in the big neighborhood. Yeah. I grew up not so wealthy in Nashville, Memphis, whatever. And, you know, the grandparents came off the boat. Your grandparents came from Yemen. What people don't understand when they get, do real estate, whether it's your forum, Project X, however they do it, and they raise their consciousness, they're breaking a generational pattern of poverty, scarcity, money's bad, don't borrow money, uh, the economy's bad. Uh, you know, my son and your kids now were thinking, I never thought that when I was 25 after going to school, you know, 30 or uh, whatever. And, and listen how your kids are talking. Uh, yeah. You know, changing the generation. You have, cultures, you have cultures like in India that change, changing your background is almost impossible. If your dad was 
or was working in a gas station or was a carpenter, it's almost impossible to change. And, and these days you see like Israel is more and more in a high tech and, and, you know, actually doing the switch like you did, you know, like being from a basic, I, I wouldn't say poor, but you know, like a basic family yeah. into being a millionaire. So it is uh, telling people it is possible. It, it, yeah. Project. And you're all brought up to work 60 hours a week for somebody else and you can make some money yeah. or you could work for yourself. There's challenges. You, you have to stick with it. And all of a sudden you're freer. You're never hundred percent free. You always have to work, but you're freer. You're in control. And to me, that's worth, you know, to me, I'm going to suit today because I have big meetings, but uh, I wear what I want to wear. I go where I want to go from real estate. To me, that's worth a, a half a million dollars a year. I work with who I want to work with. Yeah. That to me is worth, you know, you all, we've all worked people we didn't want to work with, had a weird boss. Uh, to me, that's worth a half a million dollars. And there's other ways to besides real estate, but I like real estate. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's funny that there is this meme of, of a nice Lamborghini. And then like the boss is saying, oh, if you're going to keep on working for me for, for the next 10 years for 60 hours a week, you expect to say, oh, you can buy it one. The boss says, oh, I can buy myself another one. So, yeah. <laughs> so basically, like, like doing the 60 hours a week, you, you, are, you are buying or, or renting a house instead of, of buying and, and paying the, and having the, the tenant pay your mortgage. So actually, you are uh, paying someone else's mortgage, the one that you rent from. Yeah. Or you, you are building someone else's dream, which is your boss. Um, I, I, wa I want to get just to a few points from your book that really connects to, I think, sure. who you are. You, you, you believe that the universe has no bottom of wealth. Uh, you believe about forgiveness, saying thank you. Like I, I was really right. the part of writing thank you to a utility bill because someone was working hard to bring that water to you and celebrating other people's richness. So I, I wanted to explain that the importance of these things that you see uh, as uh, as part of of being wealthy. Let's work backwards. I mean, gratitude. Um, I don't think we appreciate uh, life things, uh, you know. And again, back to our heritage, you know, the morning prayers. You wake up and you're if you do them, you know, thank you. I, I woke up. Thank you. I have a family. Thank you. I could see. I went to the. You know, I, we take exactly. a lot for granted. And I don't care whether you have you make a five dollars uh, an hour or ten dollars an hour, a thousand dollars an hour. If you're not grateful for what you have, you're not rich. It's an attitude. Yeah. So I'm here in Medellin, Colombia, and it's tough. I mean, they got problems. Yeah. The average person here makes uh, 800,000 she uh, shekels, excuse me, pesos a month. Yeah. Uh, it's $250. Yeah. It's well, huh? crazy. That's, yeah. that's the thing. We, we, we met to a, a professor, and he's making like 400 and his uncle, which is very, like, very wealthy, make uh, 1600 yeah, I mean, a doctor here makes eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars a month, maybe some doctors, some make more. Of course, you know, my cousin makes that in, in, in an hour, you know. Yeah. And but the people here, not everybody. There's exceptions. Are super happy. They're poor. They got nothing. They don't, you know, all that stuff. Um, they don't go on vacation. They don't own a car. And then I love America. I'm the most proud American you'll ever meet. I love Israel. You meet a lot of people, and they're miserable. Um, so gratefulness. Um, being thankful for the little things, for family, for health, however much money you make, you'll never be rich without it. You know, uh, that, that's the big thing. Uh, today, the maid, uh, I, I was tip maids. Uh, they work hard. I was homeless at one time. I cleaned uh, hotel rooms, uh, houses, even before I didn't like it. And I gave the lady a 10,000. Remember 10, how it used to be. Yeah, yeah I gave the lady 10,000 pesos. So, you know, you work hard. Christmas is coming. Here's a breakfast on me, a lunch, whatever you want. She almost started crying. Nobody does that. I'm like, that's wow. so sad that nobody does that. It's amazing. And you don't have to have money. Give time. Hey, thank you. You're doing a great job. It, uh, without gratitude. And, and I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people think I was brought up rich people are mean. They're jerks. They're stepping on people's back. And there is some of that for sure. But most of the really successful people I've met are very nice. <laughs> Another myth from, you know, my upbringing. Uh, they, they're, they're, they're good people. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And I, I remember when I was walking in one of the markets over there, uh, I saw some people that uh, kind of like argue uh, about a can of, of Coke or about a shirt, uh, trying to get a, a dollar down. And for, for, for us, it's just a dollar. For them in Colombia, 
it means so much. It's another meal on the table. It's another day of, of surviving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. The more you give, it's the money's a flow. If, you know, everything's energy. The universe, whatever you want to call it, God, uh, Hashem, the light, whatever you're into. Yeah. It's everything. It's physics. It's energy. If you're blocked with money or emotion or gratitude, you're blocked. If you're in the flow, it, it flows. That's what I believe. Yeah, that's amazing. So, so a, a lot of our listeners and stuff that want to start, and we're going to get to Project X in, in just a second. We mentioned it a few times. Like, uh, I, I'm sure that through your life, you had a, a, a very best deal and a very worst deal. A, a lot of like uh, uh, things that you would recommend and things that you would recommend not to do. If you can touch a few, a few of those, like for someone that just starting out, like, uh, you know, it's like talking to uh, someone that, already been been through everything and what what, what would you recommend to them what not to do bad deal yeah, like, like what like what what was your worst mistake ever that you would well, say I, you know people are gonna, you know you may not like hearing this but i'll get to the technical one in a minute the biggest mistake is waiting too long uh you know whatever you're gonna do do it now get started you know take your time learn how to do it right but i waited I, you know i had the training i knew what to do and i didn't do it and people wait on stuff. If you want to be a real estate investor, start, whether it's with us or somebody or just do a deal. Now, don't do it stupidly, but do a deal. So that, that's the biggest mistake. Everyone regrets. I know you do. How old were you when you did your first deal? You seemed like you were very young. Uh, I'm now going to be 44, and I did my first deal when I was 30. Yeah. I, I, wish, I, wish, I, did, I wish I did it when I was 20. I did my first deal. I was 28 every day. Why didn't someone show me? Yeah, like, I, I, I was reading about like i was on the phone i told you when i was 16 about the, the land in Benjamin. of course i wish i did it eventually but it took me another 14 years to eventually jump into the first deal i, I think i took uh, free real estate courses um you know like uh, studying it to eventually jump into the water and do it so believe it or not i, I know we have a lot of smart israelis on the call the the, the, uh, the meeting here I'm the most skeptical person in the world. I, I like you. I investigated. I thought I was going to be ripped off. I was scared to death. I interviewed a hundred, whatever. But here's the biggest mistake I made. And I'll get very specific. And uh, I think we talked about it right before the call. I did about 15 deals and I made some money. And that's very dangerous <laughs> <laughs> because I got cocky. Ego. You know, what destroys relationships and businesses? Um, ego and greed. Correct? I want to think about every business or company that went down, what happened? It was someone's ego. They didn't listen. They thought they knew everything or greed. They get too ready. I got some ego. I call it easing God out. I know everything. And I had a mentor, just like we in projects, we tell you, don't do a deal without uh, letting the lady look at your contract. Call your mentor, double check, verify, whatever you're doing. Have somebody, you, whatever you're doing, you need somebody to watch. Because I'm a person. I make mistakes. So I've been in real estate two years. I bought 15 properties. I'm making money. I got some cash. And a friend of mine said, I got five duplexes. I told you about it. He said, they're, and I trusted him. Nice guy. Yeah. I bought some property. He said, they're worth uh, 60 in Nashville. Now, you know, of course, now they're worth 400,000. Um, uh, he said, you can buy for uh, 18 and spend 18 to fix them about, you know, and that's 36,000. They rent for 1,000 each, 500 a side. Great cash flow. He drove me by at night. <laughs> <laughs> And I got uh, lazy. I didn't follow the system I was taught. Double check, inspect, get a contractor, verify the numbers, call somebody else, get another realtor. I just go, you know, I know the neighborhood. I know what I'm doing. I didn't call my mentor. I didn't ask for help, which he said, you know, run your deals by me. Yeah. And I bought them. And then I did you started, some You started to feel that everything you're going to touch is going to be gold and everything yeah. going to be fine. And uh, eventually you're, you're getting into... I'm smart and yeah. I skipped steps. Some people don't even have steps. I had the steps and skipped them. The yeah. systems. They say, oh, this, this one is. <laughs> They're giving me money. The bank's now loaning me money. I had a money partners, you know, whatever. I, I can't remember. I borrowed the money and I went out there and my contractor and a friend of mine stopped by and said, you know, uh, where do you, why do you think things are worth 50, 60? It's a bad neighborhood. Bad. You know, there, and, is, there, uh, there is a reason something, you know, like people. Then I did the research after I bought it. Yeah. Big mistake. Yeah. Like if, if you're not comfortable, if that's the price of something, it's numbers. Most likely there is a reason. Right. But anyway, 
Uh, they were worth 30 fixed up, uh, bought them for 18, and they needed 18. I'm going to be upside down. Uh, there were 25, 30,000, hard to rent there, bad area. And I literally, I'm upside down. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make money. I can't, if I fix them, I'm upside down. And I really thought I was going to you know, lose. I bought a, a, a five duplexes. So I'm upside down. Uh, I was like 20, 30,000 upside down. I was going to lose like $150,000. And I cried. Yeah. And then I did the hardest thing to do, ask for help. I went to my mentor and I'll never forget what he said. He said, Bobby, are you sure messed up? <laughs> he goes, you got a problem. You didn't run the numbers. You didn't double check. You didn't you know, run the comps. You didn't check the repairs. The repairs were more. But he said, here's what you're going to do. You're going to suffer. You're going to buy them. You bought them already. You're going to fix them. And you're going to rent them. And you're not going to make any money for a year or two. You're going to hate it. But he goes, real time will fix any mistake you make in real estate. Yeah. See, most of us are thinking short-term, short-term relationship. We think long-term. And I didn't believe him. I'm like, no, man, I'm upside down. Nashville's not going up. We're just never going up. It's a bad area. Fixed one or two up, rent it up, had some cash coming in, could pay the bills a little bit. Fixed another one. Then the neighbors started fixing up. Because, you know, we're, we're, we're bringing up. The entire, the entire area started to go. Five years later, I sold it for $110,000, $20,000, 819 Ramsey Street. That doesn't always happen. Wow. I paid the debt off, made money. And there's another mistake. Uh, they're now worth three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> selling is the mistake. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can relate to that. The goal the is. Department, I told you. You know, I sold for eight hundred because uh, uh, they said uh, my, my my teacher, my mentor, told said you know that there is a bonanza price for every deal. Uh, don't be a pig. Yeah. Now it's probably now it's worth uh, one point five. You know, but you know I, I I don't regret because this money I put into other deals that also you can't. Regret, but again, you know, uh, I'm from Nashville. I thought I was a genius. I thought I knew everything. I'm like, no, Nashville's going nowhere. It's not going to appreciate it now. It's like one of the hottest markets in the country. Uh, it's crazy. I, nobody, not many people saw it coming. I didn't. But again, we think short term. And what my mentor taught me on that deal was not fun. I made a mistake. I was upside down. It was horrible. Uh, but if you if you stick with it long enough, you're probably going to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> a good thing with real estate because I, I, I dealt with you know the, the stocks and things like that and eventually what got me totally into real estate is that you know time can correct like we, with stocks you got a let's say that 2000 crash I remember when I did my first uh, business degree and you know every, everyone at school I came and, and they say oh I made ten thousand dollars last night you know like the, the, That's the exciting. Bubble, it was a, a crazy bubble and whoever got too late lost it and these companies are gone but real estate is is real like eventually well, you, you can here's what, we, don't, we don't do markets we do deals but you have to know markets and i have a phd study from harvard it's not me we show it to the students you know the number one reason this phd say real estate's going up in america and this would be very true in israel the last 20 years you'll never guess people say you know the economy integration inflation Government regulation. Think about it. 80 years ago, your uh, grandparents from Yemen or whatever got on a boat and landed somewhere in Israel. They landed, they were probably getting shot at by somebody, you know, <laughs> amazing people. And they could build whatever they wanted to build. Nobody cared, right? You know, build a kibbutz, build a shtetl, build a fort, something. In Tennessee, 100 years ago, you rode a wagon, you got some land. They don't, nobody cared what you built. Yeah. Now, to build a house in Nashville or California, or Israel, five years, paperwork, regulations, lawyers, codes, zoning, environmental, if you can build it. Yeah, totally. Supply and demand, government regulation. And I always tell people, do you think government regulation is going to go down or up? Besides land being whatever. So over the long term, not every market, some markets go down. It, 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 supply and demand, that's it. Yeah, especially like... Like uh, if there is an area that you can land is something you cannot make more of. Right, and it's so regulated now in Israel to, to build. But you know, but again, um, you have to know what you're doing. You know, you need a system. You you can't just you know say oh, real estate's going up. That's not true. You still have to know what you're what you're doing and where. And they get micro markets. There's not one market in Nashville. There's 20 markets: the high end, low end, the water, the golf course, the trailers. It's all different, and it moves different.
totally. So, so what, how did you scale up from having just a few properties to have hundreds of them in, in seven different continents? Like how this happened? What, what was the turning point for you? Also, also what, what was like the greatest deal that you can think that you ever did? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm, sure, I'm sure there were a lot of them. Yeah. But real, real quick, uh, so my goal was to get 14 properties in 14 years. Number one, when you join us, you need to set a goal. Whatever it is, little big, it's your goal. Number two, then you got to execute, correct? Yeah. The hardest deal is the first one. Very hard for me, correct? But I did it. And then I said, well, uh, I got a deal this year. I'll be able to get another one next year. And then I said, well, I'll do another one. Then I learned how to raise the money and learn how to find the deals. It gets easier, just like your job, every once you start. And uh, that's why, you know, we tell people Project X, we do your first deal, you know, and we watch you and give you the system because that's the hardest deal. And if you've done deals before, do the first one the right way with a real system, whatever you're doing. But anyway, what I did, I... Uh, my goal was to get 14. The first year I actually did it, I was part-time. I got about uh, nine, 10 properties. And then I changed my goal. I said, well, if I got nine this year, I did take some time off. Maybe I'll get uh, 10 more next year. And I got 20, then 50, then 100. Then rental properties. Then I said, well, if it works with 100, maybe it'll work with 200. <laughs> but but so, so you build systems, you use other people, knowledge, you build yeah. companies. I found good teams. If you have a bad team, you have a bad business. And uh, I did a lot myself. And then I, I, I learned the system. Now, if you would have told me the first five years I was in real estate, I would ever buy a property in another city, I would go, you're crazy. I got to go see it. I got to watch them. And then I looked at companies, Marriott, McDonald's, Subway, Teva, uh, whoever you want, uh, Waze. How do they have business all over the country? They have a system all over the world. And they get a team. They got a team in Tel Aviv. Then they get a team in New York. Then they get a team in San Francisco. And I started doing deals in other cities and it worked. And now with the technology, with the phone, the Skype and the Zoom, you can see the house, you can see the people, correct? Yep. Um, and, you know, it's what you want to do. But if you would have told me I would have done deals in other cities the first five, 10 years, I said, there's no way. It's a, that's impossible. Um, it's all until about you do it, it's going to be impossible. Huh? It's all about building the teams, the system and replicating it. Exactly. And... You know, everyone's goal is different. Uh, the best or the uh, deal I think I've ever, I've ever done until this year, because I now to me real estate's numbers. I just bought a silica mine, which is a crazy deal. Mot we look for motivated sellers. Uh, the biggest deal I did up until last year or two was in France, and very interesting. A nice Jewish guy uh, who uh, uh, who went to France met some socialists. You never know why people sell. And they had all this land in Mar Marseille, France. And all these real estate people came to buy it from them. They said, we are socialists. We hate banks. We hate big companies. We hate everybody. Whatever. You know, had a weird attitude. And they didn't like them. And they liked my friend, Danny Rothschild. And they liked me. We're nice. We're simple. We're not like some big company. We talked to them. And they said, all we want is we love horses. So we'll sell you the land at a good price, but you have to help us build a horse thing. <laughs> like, you never know what motivates people. Divorce. What motivates you does not motivate somebody else. They gave us the land. They're very wealthy, so we didn't take advantage of it. We don't take advantage of money. We bought it very cheap, and we built 400 homes uh, there and did very well. I never went there. It was all Skype and Zoom. Very nice people. Yeah, I speak a little bit of French. Je suis de français. Comment ça va? Très magnifique. Je m'appelle hier. Je suis à Paris. It was a crazy deal, and I did but I, I was taught you have to work hard to make some money. And it wasn't that, it, you had, it wasn't easy relationship. It took time. There were challenges. But I wasn't working 60 hours a week for yeah. 10 years. Because also, also you build your system. You build your connections. You relationship, know? yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it wasn't yeah. like you were born, born yesterday and suddenly this deal came from the sky. That's right. And I tell people, if you work hard enough, you get lucky. <laughs> Listen, definitely. I see the things that happen, you know, ever since we manage the forum and everything we're doing for the community yeah. and, and building all of that and the podcast and, and what we, we offer. You know, I get to meet you and other amazing people and then new friendships. Right. I go to Israel, suddenly I, I have so many new friends. I, I meet so many uh, friends from the forum that I know virtually that they come through New York and they come 
yeah. give lunch with me, just talking, you know, about life, about real estate, of course. You get to work with who you want to work with. But on the other side, on the tough side, I want to be very clear about this. This week, I had two deals fall through. So you have to look at a lot of deals, talk to a lot of people to get lucky. I tell them it's like dating, uh, you know, shit or whatever. You don't just, you know, go on one date, uh, maybe, uh, you know, and everything's perfect, correct? It's a numbers game. Yeah. And that said, I don't get numbers of offers, and, and most people will not do it, correct? And Definitely. that's the problem. Like, uh, a lot of people cannot handle uh, failure. Like that they go through uh, one failure or second failure. You, you see, for example, uh, I just saw that there was a, a, the commentary about WeWork. Um, so he came to the U.S. with the big dream, and then he, he, he says he failed first, he failed second, he failed, you know, it, it was failing so many times, and eventually he had the huge uh, success. So He failed again with his public offering, but it's an okay failure. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. So yeah. two, two, 220, whatever it's 4 billion, you make 800 million or whatever. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah I, I'm but, not getting into the details about what I think personally yeah. and things like that, and I'm just saying that, Overall, eventually, something big came out of it, and uh, I'm sure more that he, that he could imagine. Right. Unless talk- he had the success wall, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've all- I, I love people who think big, and I, and I challenge everyone listening, most of us, including me, do not think big enough, correct? Yeah. And most people are not willing to do the work. Um, you know, but, uh, uh, I, you know, I'd like to be very upfront with people. There was a lot of real estate companies in America that I was, I knew they all got in a lot of trouble, legal trouble. And the reason was, is they weren't, you know, you got to really tell people the hard truth. Uh, my favorite word in Hebrew is talkless. Get and to the point. Get every to the speech point. I do in America, I start out with this disclosure. Most people in business do nothing and make nothing. <laughs> Most people in real estate, like me the first year, do, don't make any offers and make no deals. And that's the reality in any group, right? Yeah. And if you work hard and stick with it, you could be successful. Nothing's guaranteed, correct? If you do nothing, I promise you, you'll make nothing. <laughs> how many offers are you making? How many deals are you making? Whoever sits all day and do nothing, nothing happens to him for the good and for the bad. You know? Back to your story. You went out and handed flyers. You talked to 50 people, 100 people, whatever it was, and you didn't give up. Yeah. Most people give up. Yeah, a lot of people I can do the, uh, are breaking the uh, I got the believe in mentality that if I already put, uh, spent six months into it and I'm not going to get to the goal, I wasted six months. So I got I to gotta get to the goal in order to make it a success. I, I, don't, I didn't really spend like, a, uh, like I, I learned through the process, of course, sure. but eventually if you don't get, you don't buy the property, you don't. So eventually you did all of that. and. And you didn't reach the goal. Yeah. So now, now let's talk about Go Project ahead. X. First, if you can tell us in a few words, what is Project X? Like people hear about it all the time. It's become like the synonym for, for real estate schooling and, and mentoring. So and by the way, there's a lot of great schools and programs in Israel and America that are awesome. I mean, they really are. And I tell people, we're not for everybody, you know? But here's what's a little different about us. I mean, maybe it's different. Uh, one is uh, we're a community. Uh, we're not a course, a seminar, a book, a training. And that's what people don't understand. It's like, we're not just like, come to the class for three months and we give you a book and good luck, you know? <laughs> and we started the community uh, at, uh, 15 years ago in America and golly, seven, eight years ago in, in Israel. It's crazy. Uh, complete accident in Israel. And uh, now we have over, I think, 1,500 uh, people in our Israeli community. We just got back from Africa. And it's the other thing that's different about it, and this is why I started now, real quick. I teach at all these seminars. They hire me. I, I know them. I've been to all of them, the, the gold, the, the, the diamond, the Tony Ro- I love it all. You, yeah. learn, you can learn from everything if you're open, if you're open. And I know people are listening, saying, oh, I don't like what he said. I don't agree with it. It's a buffet. You have to pick and choose what you like, correct, and what's going to work for you. Everybody's different. Every deal's different. You get a lot of knowledge, and eventually you, you choose how to – how it fits to your belief. Right. But here, here's the thing. I've got all these seminars where people are in America were spending 20, 30 grand and they get a mentor and a class and a course and a boot camp and all the boot ground boot camp. And I'd ask a question because in business, one thing matters, results. Right? Talk is cheap. Yeah. I'd say, How many offers did you make? 
none. I've been in for a year, six months. I went to six trainings, two courses, online, offline. I got eight, you know, boxes of books. And I, they, they were happy. They learned a lot. And then I asked them, um, uh, how many deals you got? And 90% plus said zero. So Project X is learning by doing. It's, and you know this from the military. I base it on the military. See, do, teach. Yeah. We, we don't talk about a goal. Yeah, we talk about a goal. We teach how to set a goal. Then you set it. Then you do it. We show you how to make calls. Then you make a call to a realtor or an investor. We show you how to raise money. Then you, we do practices and over and over again, like in the army. Load the gun, load the gun, load the gun. <laughs> and all of our teachers are students, so some decide to teach. And we collaborate. You don't have to, but we collaborate. And we're very system-oriented. And it works, not for everybody, but it's learning by doing. And, you know, it's a process. It takes a little time, but um, uh, it, you learn by doing. Experiential learning, not training, not courses. We have those. And the other thing is, which uh, the Israelis really invented it, is we have uh, mental mentors, we have contract mentors, so we're very specialized now. So if someone has a block, we have a, a, a read who's amazing, she'll help you get through the mental. Uh, Shoshi looks at your contract. You have someone escorting you through the whole process. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then we work together. So this happens down the road. 67% once you're trained, if you do the work, it's not for everybody. Once, you know, uh, you know, you find the deal, I find, the, you know, one of the other students finds the money. And yeah. the groups that collaborate are much more successful than the ones that don't. But you don't have to. Some are doing it on their own, some are whatever. And it's an amazing community. And we're, we're together. We, we, the, the people that joined Israel seven years ago still come to the meetings, still come to the community meetings, still come to the trainings, uh, the, the meetings. And because we're, when one student learns something, we all learn. Um, it's that's the cool part. Yeah, um, I, I know. I know. You know, like I, I uh, get a, give a lot of uh, consultation to a lot of people that consult with me, and I know that a, a lot of people are loving and want to go to Project X because of the community and because of the, they need someone that going to hold their hand and kind of like lead them through the way, and they know that that if something happens, they have someone to talk to. They have someone to ask, someone to, like, like with your deals that you said, someone to double check, someone, to, someone that can tell you, all right, yeah, I think it's a good deal. You know, especially for the first ones, I think it's a... Yeah. And that's what we do. We walk you through your first deal and then we're there for you and supporting and whatever. And, and, you know, we're there for you. But that's our goal is to get you past that first deal. That's the hardest one. And a lot of people come who've done deals and say, well, I want to learn how to do it right now. I, I, I don't want to have a system. You know, I made some money on some. I lost one on one. And if you're an investor, you need a system. And we want to get you that first deal. So where, where is the name came from? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I kind of envision a James Bond movie, you know, where they go and they open the curtain and you see, like, where they're really training and where the real secrets are. Yeah. This is kind of the real factory like how it's really done. Not a seminar, not a training, not a bunch of blah, blah, blah. Kind of this is, you know, you see behind the curtain. How It's work. How do you really do a deal? Here's the steps. Here's the system. And, you know, you have to do it. It's, you know, if you don't do it, nothing happens. You have to do the work. I see. And what is the current status with, with the project? I, I know that you, you started to work in uh, Russia. We have a group in Russia. In Russia in Africa, in Africa, right? Africa. We're going to Netherlands soon. And, you know, the, it's international community. It's, it's, it's amazing. And we, we're starting to communicate, uh, you know, the Americans, the Israelis, like a family. It's, I, I love it. And I would have never thought, uh, you know, I, it's small. It's still small. In America, we only do a few a year. In Israel, we do a few a, a year. We're having a, a big presentation at Don Panorama. I think a lot of your people are coming. So if you're from the forum, you come to the speech of the Don Panorama, please come say hello. Definitely. I'll be there. definitely. And, and we, we, we also have a, a special offer for them that we're going to mention uh, soon. Um, so, so I know that the, uh, usually um, in, uh, I, I saw in uh, your book that um, you have this presentation that you do, that you have 10 $100 bills. Oh, I don't do that in Israel. It wouldn't work. They're too smart. <laughs> so oh my God. Where did you hear about what it is? Like what, what, what's this experience like uh, when you do it in the U.S.? You know, it's funny, I, I, I saw somebody do something similar and I did it to show people that 
what your motivation is and not their motivation, what you value is not their value. Yeah. So this is crazy. People will not understand it. By the way, when I saw it the first time, I didn't understand it. So if you don't, uh, I'm at a seminar. People know me and you know trust me a little bit. And I say, I have a $100 bill. And there's two rules. We're doing auction. And the first rule is if you're at the, at the end of uh, five minutes, if you're the highest bid, you win. Yeah. If you're the second highest bid, yeah. so let's say you bid 80 and uh, a REIT bid 70. Okay. You would win. You pay 80, get the $100 bill. And a REIT is the second bid. She loses but has to pay the 70. Yeah. So you don't want to be the second. Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tell people, you know, get out of your comfort zone, a bid. And I thought I'd make $90 or $92 auctioning a $100 bill. That makes Jewish logical sense, correct? So, but people are not logical. Think of what people pay for a banana taped to a piece of paper or wait in line to go to a club or whatever. So what it shows is Peter's motivation. The, I once got $30,000, really. And I tell you, you have to pay. It's not a joke. And somebody paid $30,000 for a $100 bill. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. I know the nice Jewish Israeli are going, makes no sense. Now, I was at a seminar and I felt so bad or I knew I would do it. I give them value at the end, both people that bid, because the person who bid like 25 had to pay. Now I did, I gave most of the charity. So I want to be very clear about that. And number two, I gave them coaching and mentoring and this and that and whatever, try to give them the, the value back, which they were very happy. But to show you that, why would someone pay more than hundred dollars for a hundred dollar bill? By the way, I want to be very clear about this. All our little seminar tricks in America, you know, our motivational stuff. I don't do it in Israel. People are too smart. <laughs> so, so you fly to Israel every three months, right? Sometimes more. I love it. And uh, we have a great group there. And uh, I teach. I'm involved. Uh, I don't also like these big seminars where you never meet the person. All the mentors, the owners, me are there at all the meetings, most of them. You know, not all, but most. I teach Project X, the trainers. We have great trainers now. We have, we have uh, probably 15 trainers, uh, one for every eight, 10 students, uh, something like that. We have head trainers. I like the Israeli military. Yeah. You know, so how you know, does the, the process go? Like wh wh when you go to, when you come to Israel, they get to meet you. Uh, well, yeah, I, I give a speech. If they want to, they uh, come to a test drive. They apply, right? Because it's not for everybody. It's two way. We spend so much time with people, our, especially our trainers, and it's a group. I'm with together for a long, long time, years sometimes. Yeah. You know, the first six nine months is very intense, and after that's community. So. A lot of people that apply, we're, we're looking for people that are trainable, motivated, are pleasant, you know, and a lot of people are not accepted. We're not looking, for, you know, in America, if you have a credit card and you fill the sheet out, congratulations, you're in the seminar. <laughs> so so what, what are you guys looking as to the mentality of the person? You know, we have, a, of course, our Israeli military Mossad uh, people did the application. It's amazing. And they're really basically looking for open-minded, trainable, coachable, because, you know, and pleasant, you know, so, ah, ah, you know, someone's got bad energy or negative. We don't not, want not, that. Uh, not also. <laughs> yeah. Someone who's uh, not trainable, you know, I know it all, you know, let me tell you, you're wrong. And we you know, we know our system works. Yeah. It's, it's not for everybody. And then, you know, we, we want to have an impact community, get along with people, give you a gift, you know, a, a bit of collaborate. That's the basic thing. It's not, it's not anything too difficult, but I think 30, 40% are not accepted. And it's got to be a win-win. You know, we don't yeah. want people that are stressed out about money or, or uh, about life or, you know, I mean, we'll help everybody, but, you know, we want people that are really serious about long-term working business, growing a business together. Yeah, I, I heard from a lot of, there's a lot of very good comments about the project. A lot of people say that when you go, you need to be committed. Yeah. Like, like you need to come, of course, and, you know, like it, it's not just you're going to sit there, do nothing, and you're going to become a millionaire. That's the biggest lie. I, I listen to the You're going to get rich quick, uh, do a deal in uh, three weeks. It's not real. We're very real, you know, uh, and uh, we're real in America, same system in America. But in Israel, we're more real, <laughs> you know, because Israelis are more real. Totally. And it's serious. And so, it's a business. It's, it, whether you do one house or two rentals or five rehabs over the next year or two, as you know, it's a business. That's it's so, it's so, a I'm sure you got a lot of great uh, relations, connection with, with students. If you can share some of success stories that you heard, like that, that you know that you've been involved. 
uh, with with people through the course, uh, like just to give like examples of of uh, for me and you know your father. A lot of people are moms, dads. Uh, you know when you do well, you're happy. When your kid does something, and I'm going to tell you something. It's very emotional for me because the first time I came to Israel, I was a homeless teenager. I was 17. I had nothing. I was in the streets of Jerusalem. I was. I literally was a home. I was homeless. I was homeless back home for a little bit. And now that the rails have this group and these people come to me and say, listen, uh, uh, and I know most of them, you know, I'm there, you know, uh, well, uh, Dossi, I thought you did four deals. No, I've done 25 deals. <laughs> you know, I just didn't know this or that. It's, 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 it's overwhelming uh, for me. I get so excited. And we've had people do amazing things. Uh, one of our trainers now, Galit, I was just with her, just an example. Uh, she came over to Texas from Israel because we recommend you come over. Oh, you know? I, I met her in uh, in Manhattan. She is amazing. So I met her like the first year because, yeah, I did two houses and I met her in Dallas. She's super nice and serious and working hard. Then like a year later or uh, six months later, she was, yeah, I'm building some houses. Well, how many? Amazing. 20. Amazing. And now she's building build 100. <laughs> you, know, amazing. Uh, you know, it's a process that's not going to happen the first whatever. Uh, we've had students do very well. And by the way, it's not just about numbers or volume. We had one lady who said, I want to spend more time with my kids. And now I'm spending more time with my kids. You know, I did three deals, two deals, whatever. Uh, you know, I'm home more. Uh, uh, Ron, uh, one of our guys, he the first year, he didn't believe it. It was tough. And then he started doing deals. Now he's at 40 deals. His family life has changed. His attitudes change. And that's what I tell people about Project X. We warn you. Yeah, you're going to learn real estate. Yes, we'll walk you through your, your first deal. We escort you, but you got to do the work. But we're going to warn you, your other business, because everyone's busy. They're doctors, lawyers, generals, army people, housewives. Everybody's busy. But they, they, they say, we say your life's going to change. Your relationships change. You learn how to communicate, uh, how to do better business, systems, uh, time management. And that's the thing I get most excited about. Not just the real estate and the money, but the, the change in lifestyle, they're more relaxed. That, you know, real estate is stressful, but now they're, and they understand, and they're, some people travel. You know, I just took a more vacation with my family. It's the greatest vacation. That's what I get excited about, not just the deals or the money. And we've had students do a couple of deals, and we've had uh, young people, yeshiva students, do 20 deals, 50 deals. It's crazy. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, so I, I want to share the offer that we have to our audience. First of all, going into the meeting with you um, cost money, of course, but we're going to give, for a limited time, we're going to give free tickets to, to people that are currently listening, listening to us. And also, we have another offer that they can get a present from us, from the forum and the book. Nice. So, so we're going to share the screen now to show them how they can get it. Yeah. So basically, let me share... Oh, this is to come hear me speak of the Don Panorama in Tel Aviv, correct? Yep, exactly. And by the way, I talked to uh, our CEO today, Tuvia, and it always sells out, and we're about sold out, but we have, we're going to keep the room for your folks, and we appreciate it. You've sent quite a few people to us, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely. We, we, we love the foreign people, uh, not blind, which means stay still, right? Uh, real estate. like it's Blan cool is, is re real estate. It's the biblical world. Yeah, like stay, real estate. stay still. It stays. Yeah. Uh, I love it. So th but, this, is our, this is our website, and I'm going to explain how to get to the deal. So basically, the website is, uh, we have 12 websites in each and every language. Uh, we have Arabic, we have Chinese, we have uh, English. Of Arabi, Hamash, yeah. yeah, so basically... Uh, whoever speaks English, uh, just to present, you know, you can click on the American flag uh, and then you have special deals. We're going to go back to Hebrew because most of our audience uh, that's going to join in Israel speaks Hebrew. So basically, you click on special deals on the menu. Special deals. Or you can go down here. And basically, you see here there is uh, real estate studies, Limodei Nadlan. And then we can see Robert Chemin. So you click here. Okay. And, yeah, and here we're going to explain uh, the, the intro package. The intro package, here you see the dates, most of them are sold out already. And uh, we have a few dates open. 
So usually a ticket costs 197 shekels to get uh, to the convention, but as mentioned, we're gonna have uh, whoever comes to the page for a limited time can, can fill up the form here, or there's another button here that's gonna get you into a special promotion page, a limited time promotion page. And basically here you can choose if to get for no money down, zero shekels, a, a, a place in the convention, and the intro that we're gonna explain what is the intro package. So basically the intro package include the convention, um, the, um, the learning process, um, the sadna it's called, uh, the online, I think it's uh, 52 uh, uh, lessons online with you, yeah. and uh, a special deal only for, uh, to the forum people, the book that we mentioned that is a, is a bestseller, uh, the normal price in Israel is 75 shekels and you get it, part of it. All you need to do is use the code forum nadlan when you check out. And there is another gift that we are giving especially for people that are coming through the forum. And I'm gonna explain what it is. So we have a program on the website uh, that we told you that is 12 languages. There are more than 10,000 articles on the website. Wow. So, yeah, so that this, this package is more worth more than a thousand shekels per year and we are giving it as a, as a gift to people that are gonna join the program. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's a great present. So it's got real estate calculators, more than 500 repository of real estate documents, Excel files, uh, real, real estate um, uh, educational videos, the podcasts, and we, we also have a, a special um, a special program that locate more than one that deals from one thousand different locations online, and bring all of these deals right into the website for you to find the deals, and a real estate university that actually built by the community. Every time there is a special term that you want to learn about, we take from the people that actually was teaching it in the forum, we built a, a, an encyclopedia for them. So you can check all of these features right on the homepage, and we are giving all of that as a gift to you guys that are gonna join now to the program. So here you can see the, uh, the Nadlanpedia, it's called, the Encyclopedia for Real Estate. Nice. Yeah, this is the automatic deal finder. It scrolls, the, the spiders that scrolls more than 1,000 sites all over the internet to yep. find for deals. It's bring everything to the website. This is our podcast. You can see Roman here and Omer from, uh, from Project X. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. <laughs> Great guys. Yeah. and. Uh, you get also uh, dozens of discounts for real estate services that you get as part of that gift, as part of the program. You can see that user, usually it costs $29 a month. You get six months for free. Wow. And so don't wait and join the seminar, join the program, and use the code Forum Nadlan. And b before we're gonna say uh, goodbye, I, I wanna mention that you also, every week you go live and you all the time have very interesting stories. I, I wanted to ask you, where do you get all of these ideas for your weekly live video? Live business. So we try to keep people current, help them out. But I'm very excited to see a lot of your foreign people there at the speech, the that, that panorama. and. We do a lot of fast, like how to find deals, analyze them, systems. We're teaching. It's not just a, it's 
you know, this has been a very nice conversation with you, but we go very systematic. And I'll be there early answering questions and I'll stay late. So if you do sign up, thank you for the package. Come at the end and say hello from the forum. I'll be there and, you know, it gets a little crazy, but I, I would like to meet you if you come. Hope you do. And I'll. Yeah, all right. So we are back. We had a small incident. You see, this is live. Things happen. Uh, so we got Robert back on. Like uh, the battery lasted just like two minutes before the end of the podcast. But things happen, you know. Uh, we are real people, real life, real computers, real batteries. And you're still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. Good luck. So, Stuff happens. Keep smiling. Always. So, so, so you started. Uh, we show the 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 special deal that we are giving to the members of the forum. And you mentioned uh, about uh, the connection that you have, like for, for, the, for the people that they're welcome to come in and say hello. Please. And also meet the trainers and the students, ask them questions, ask the tough questions. And we, we do best deal, worst deal. It's very talkless, real systems, how to find, how to analyze real systems. Uh, you know, you and I had a great conversation today, but uh, the, the speech and presentation will be much more, you know, step one, step two, step three, how to find them, how to fund them, and uh, what works, what doesn't work. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, your people there. You've already, you've already uh, sent quite a few people to us, so thank you. Yeah, de definitely. We, we, are, we have a very large forum. We like to help people. Uh, we will never collaborate or work with someone that we don't believe in. You know, like we, we uh, so definitely we know what you guys offer. Um, you know, f f first, you know, when you hear about the program, you, you, you don't know what you think, but I kept, sure. on, I kept on hearing again and again, whenever your the name of Project X comes, so many great feedback that then I said, all right, uh, uh, let's, let's talk to them. And then I met with Galit and Tuvia and Gilad and I, all of the great people. And I, I'm sure I, 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 I forgot or didn't mention uh, uh, dozens of other names. And there's an Arit and Mayor, <laughs> our head coach, head trainer. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's all about having a great team. So we definitely like to work with the best. We like to recommend for the best, you know, and uh, we definitely believe in you guys. And that's why uh, we collaborate. Uh, so, guys, don't miss it. You get a free ticket. That's a limited time offer. You get a free ticket to come and see Robert Chairman in Israel. You get only 200 shekels for the entire package. It's also limited with the book, with our program that, that uh, usually you need to pay for, that you get so many things with it, and with the seminar. And, and that's, that's the best door for you to start doing real estate and do it the right way. Well, thank you. And I want to congratulate you on what you've done with the forum. I know you help a lot of people and you've got a great group. And I want to congratulate everybody for being here. The best investment is in yourself, in knowledge, education, through the forum. And uh, hopefully a lot of you will come see us. Um, and looking forward to meeting you anywhere you can meet our community and ask them questions besides having me teach you. Uh, so it's a good opportunity. So hope to, hope to see you in uh, Tel Aviv soon. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and if, if, if by any chance you will be in Tel Aviv by end of May, uh, I'm, I'm going uh, to a few days in Moscow and uh, St. Petersburg, and then I'm going to be a week in Israel. So definitely, uh, if you are around in any of these places, in these dates, <laughs> we can definitely meet. You know, in Project X, real estate is about making offers, so I'm going to make an offer. Let's communicate. Uh, really appreciate your support. And I'd like to buy you lunch or dinner or coffee in uh, Moscow, St. Petersburg, or Tel Aviv. <laughs> uh, That's great. I, I surely made a new friend today, a new old friend. I already know you from, uh, oh, yeah. from hearing, but now talking to you was great. Definitely, if you come to New York or whatever, or Moscow or Israel, we're definitely going to get together for a drink, for lunch, just talking. And... And that's it, guys. And follow Robert Chemin. Go to his profile. I, I mentioned before, you have a live video every week. You tell interesting stuff. So definitely do that. And we're going to say uh, goodbye to everyone. I never say goodbye. I will say literal. See you soon. Literal. See you soon. And I want to wish you and all the form much success and uh, a lot of happiness, health, and uh, enjoy. And uh, I'm excited about selling breading Hanukkah in the Holy Land. 
Oh, nice. All right. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Stay well. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.